Are you guys ready? I think I'm ready for this. Uh, John, go ahead and unmute yourself. Everybody, I want you to give a wonderfully warm welcome to today's guest. <laughs> This sexy motherfucker with long hair. Let's give it up for. Yes! I'm. John! You made it! You beautiful fat faces, here I am! (laughs) (laughs) Oh, yes, I. You're sitting here talking about, like, uh, drinking and being an addict and stuff. I'm, like, sitting here, like, I just poured flat Fanta into Jameson and like at 4 p.m. Like it just woke up like a half hour ago. Like, God damn it. Well, it's okay. It seems like seems like you have your life in order. So it's okay. <laughs> so you can do whatever you want. Right, right. And you live in the nice castle and you, yes. you know, you have all yeah. the amenities. And- exactly. When when you're living in, 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 in a beautiful castle like that, you're, you're, uh, you're, you're bound to just wake up and start drinking, you know? Right. What else do you? do once you've done it all you know? like like if, if, if do you watch like game of thrones or any of that shit yeah yeah i do i just watched the the, the season the, finale yeah yeah uh, dude what'd you think of it first of all well i i could have used more death more death and more gore through the whole throughout the whole season what about that okay spoilers if anybody is not up on hot d or hot, a house of the dragon i have not house talked to it's, it's fucking hot d baby hot d that's what they're calling it haven't you seen the nerds the fucking nerds are calling it hot d hot d i haven't <laughs> seen that that's hilarious so. yeah of course uh but but you know like i i agree i thought oh, mighty mighty what's up mighty mighty hold on let me get mighty mighty what what's up Mighty Mighty, it's been a while. Welcome back. Good to see you. Um, I got two episodes left. Not impressed. Naders, damn it. I don't want to give away any spoilers for you then. So, I, I, you know what, Naders? I'll, I'll, I'll refrain from saying anything too much about it. You know, I'm having a hard time getting into the... <laughs> to the hot uh yes i'm mom you know you know a lot of people that you know what uh, the biggest thing for me i feel like and you know without spoiling it for people we won't talk too much on that uh, on the on the uh, season finale of it but you know i think the biggest thing that i've heard was that halfway into the fucking season let it go i'll be back okay buddy um halfway into the season they changed like half of the characters yeah I didn't know, and all the time jumps are confusing. <laughs> yes, I know. Like literally, I I would like this is how I do it because I'm because I'm a nerd. But I'll, I'll watch the episode and then I'll go onto YouTube and watch breakdown uh, uh fucking videos on the episode just so I can kind of get a better understanding of what's going on. Totally. But, yeah, I do the same thing. I I, I um I fucking love Emergency Awesome. Uh, fucking um. Who else is it? Uh, there's three of them that I watch. There's an Australian dude. There's the fucking Emergency Awesome. And there's another dude who... For YouTubers. Yeah. The, the whole family fucking is over my head. No, I get it, Naders. It's ridiculous. Um, so so I'll have to go and watch those just so I can understand what's going on. Yeah. But, uh, but, but yeah, I did think it was... Uh, it was a uh, it, it was hard to get into that you know and i also felt like there wasn't because there is like a, a big thing at, at the end of the the season finale um i felt like that could have been more impactful if we had more time to uh hang out with the characters because yeah. i felt like we got halfway through the season and then we have a whole new cast for the most part except some aren't you know it was weird yeah like like okay some of them need to change but some of them don't like <laughs> yeah. so, and i'm pretty sure the chick who played rhaenyra is like 30 years old anyways who played her younger self yeah, she so was why a- change her when she's 30 years old plus that girl was like way more intense and cool and like yeah and hot like yeah i agree i agree she had way she had it going on she had the total package yeah, dude. And, and it's not that, you know, older Renera isn't... No, she you know, sucks. I hate her face. I hate her attitude. <laughs> like, And I'm like, what? so you have, like, six kids with, like, like four different dudes? Like, 
and none of them were your husband. Like it's, it's oh, I just well, rubbed me the wrong way. Well, yeah, that that's the thing, right? Like it, here's the thing is that she wants to hold up her fucking head like she didn't go out and and have bastard kids, right? Like Renee, what she wants to be like, no, my kids are legit. Like nobody yeah. better say shit about my kids. It's like, bitch, we know that they're the strong kids, all right? We all know yeah. it's the strong Everyone boys. Knows. <laughs> Everyone knows, and you're, and you suck for doing that, and you suck for like holding them, up, you know, like, uh, I mean, I guess the, the what's the what's what's the outcome if she doesn't do that though, right? I guess it would be like she would be stripped of her titles and and, and possibly put to death or something, or kids, you know, some horrible thing might happen to their children. So right, for all intents and purposes, they're legitimate. <laughs> yeah. Yo. <laughs> yeah, they're legit. They're legit. Yeah, no, no, I, I feel you, man. I, that the younger one was was way more intense, and I do feel like the older one it kind of because if you read the book, the the Black Queen is is ruthless, like hella ruthless, and I feel like in the show it shows her and paints her as like this very, you know, like I just want to keep the peace, like because because her father, um. Uh, was it Jaharis or Viserys? Viserys, Viserys, like his father Jaharis, wanted to keep. So he ruled um, with peace in mind, right? Like c- c- you yep. know how he was always like trying to avoid. Uh, oh yeah, he didn't want any war. No, or do anything. People yeah. are bringing up problems. He's like, let's just party and have a good time. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He just kept pushing. <laughs> Moving <laughs> Dutchman. <laughs> What's going on, buddy? Thank you so much for that sub, my friend. Good to see you. Naders, look at that. 164 subs. Um, Moving Dutchman, I have no idea what we're going to do for 200, but I'm, I'm, I, got the, I got the wheels turning. I didn't forget. I'm, I'm still thinking. Welcome, my friend. Good to see you. Um, how fucking dare you. How dare you, Moving Dutchman? popping off with them gifties thank you for gift subbing yes i'm mom and naders uh moving dutchman you are a gentleman and a scholar and a master blaster all right here this is for you buddy i don't know how we're gonna top this hello mighty mighty this is jean claude van damme and i want to give you a shit thank you a big old splits <laughs> and the <laughs> fuck <laughs> sorry as a thank you <laughs> for all that you do for this channel <laughs> fuck my face hello thank Ruby you robbie <laughs> this is gandalf <laughs> thank you for all that you do for this channel and always remember a moving dutchman is never late <sighs> is, that, no is that you early, doing those voice impressions no precisely when he means to. No, that's Gandalf, bitch. That's Gandalf. No, that's Gandalf. That's man. Gandalf, son. We no fucking impressions here. Thank you, Robbie. I appreciate you. And uh, yes, I'm John. I'm sorry for calling you a bitch. That was that was rude and just uncalled for. <laughs> <laughs> just, and I'm glad it sort of just went went went, went by you. But I'm swinging back. It, 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 I'm so used to you know like my friends being like that and stuff. It's I just, know it does just go right by me. Do you do you think that like growing up in the Midwest, you just you have that kind of relationship? I mean, because you do have that relationship with people like out on the coast and stuff. I mean, well, I guess on the West Coast, but there's just something about the Midwest. And you're from Michigan. Yep. And I'm originally from Michigan. And uh, there's just something about the Midwest that where the, we're like we're all just sitting here trying to like bring each other down, but bring each other up at the same time in, in a good way. <laughs> yeah, good yeah, way. yeah. I've always said like my best friends, like the way I make friends are like they'll be assholes to you at first, and you'll say something assholeish to them, and you're like, I like you. You want to hang out? You know. Like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, you called me a bitch. Let's hang out. Yeah, like, oh, sweet. Like, all... If you're like overly nice to me, I'm gonna be like, mm, that's fake as fuck. You there's know? some, like, yeah. There's know. something. There's something about these motherfuckers. Um, I, I, I kind of want to go back to Hot D just because I don't want to leave it uh, uh, open. But, but you know, like, for I forgot where we were though. Yeah, me too. Me too. Uh, <laughs> well, we were talking about how uh, Renera, the new actress, is not as great, and she's kind of soft. Oh, she's not. I I like the other one so much. I was like so intrigued with mm-hmm. her. Like, but you know what? I I really like the new Allison better though. I like. Yeah, I I've heard people say that too. The new Allison was better. She's uh, that actress is really cool. She was in um, uh, Ready Player One. She was um, 
maybe Rain, I can remember if she's paying attention. Um, she played, uh, fuck, what did she play on Ready Player One? The girl, what's her name with the scar in her face? I don't remember. I'm talking to Raina, sorry. Uh, <laughs> she's probably if not I listening. help, I would. God damn it, John, why don't you know? Yeah, John, you're kicked off. <laughs> you're, you're off the show. All right, I'm just going to look it up. Ready Player Ready. Where? Artemis. Artemis. Thank you, Raina. She played Artemis in Ready Player One. And, um, Michigan. Michigan. Well, I, we'll, we'll come back to Michigan. No, but but yeah, I like her better. Because she seems to have more of the, like, of that, like, um, she's uptight. She's really loyal to her role. Um, she's so loyal, too, that, it, like, when, when Viserys is, like, having sex with her, like, she just lays there and, and just <laughs> does her duty. <laughs> like, she is just all about duty. She's all about commitment and, like, you yeah, know. Yeah, then she goes psycho. Right, yeah, she tries to stab in front of everybody. Yeah. yeah, in front of everyone, and, and, and so like I, I really do like the new actress, but yeah, I don't know, man. I, I, I'm, I don't know. Do you think if you, because you obviously probably watch Game of Thrones, right? You watch the original series. Yeah, and I will. I did watch it all the way through once, and then saw the end, and I was like, well, I never need to do that again. <laughs> Yeah, no one like that. Nick, welcome, buddy. Good to see you. And I've heard people say, like, well, what's the point of watching House of the Dragon when I know how Game of Thrones ends? See, th there was a lot of that. I, I did see that, but it, they got a whole new crew, and they got, like, they made a promise that they're not going to phone it in and that people are going <laughs> to stay on board. Because the problem was is that the last, the creators, la uh, for the last season, they were involved in, I think they were doing the Star Trek or they're doing Star Wars or something. So they were like half in, like the, the, the pinnacle, the peak of this show, the thing we were been waiting for this whole time, they're too busy to make it good. Yep, and the, yeah. there were some great parts, but man, it seemed like it just flew by. And I'm kind of getting that. Just because of these time jumps and the new cast, I'm kind of getting that from the new show. But they do promise that the time jumps are sort of over. But I don't know. Do do you think that? Um, oh shit! I had I forgot what I was going to ask you. I initially was going to ask you something. That's why I brought up the original show. <laughs> God, I'm such a burnout. This is why I'm stopping weed right now because I, I'm having a hard time the, thinking. I everything. feel yeah, I'm the, I, I'm the same way. Although I'm glad I because I didn't smoke weed for the longest time, you know, and and I was heavy drinking. But since I started smoking more weed, since Willie Town, and there's something about hanging out with Glow Stick Willie and that whole fam that makes you smoke more, you know, and like you feel like oh, I'm gonna smoke tons of weed and drink tons of liquor, you know, like yeah. <laughs> so. Trust me, it's not just you, you know, like it's that it's being with them, you know. Right. Right, there's something about it where just excess is 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 honored and yeah, and, <laughs> and they we were celebrate. all right there in the same spot on that Saturday night, you know, that fateful Saturday night, <laughs> which was great because we're both like fucking shit canned and we're trying to like you're trying to run a whole stage, which yeah, I dude. don't even. <laughs> I don't even know how you did that shit, bro. I don't either, dude. I was going to say, like, you, uh, I hope you, like, we're seeing the amount of work I was putting in there and Absolutely. trying to maintain my shit, you know? Absolutely. Well, well, that was the whole thing, man. I couldn't even imagine that, uh, uh, you know, like, being in that condition, trying to operate all those buttons and shit, like, I, wires, like, it was Cords just... and fucking, it's pouring rain on all the equipment and shit, too, like... <laughs> It's wild, dude. It was wild. Uh, but yeah, that 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 was really fun. That was I I really really enjoyed. Yeah, go versus fish. I didn't know I didn't know go uh, v fish uh, was your mod. I saw that he's your mod. So that was he's fun. my mod. I'm his mod. Uh, it, we're we're friends. You know, uh, I met him through Glow Stick Willie. You know, like mm -hmm. they found him, and then I started talking to him, and then you know he came up and hung out with glow stick then came here one day and then we shot this video i don't know if you ever saw the video where i go and try to break him out of glow stick willie prison and 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 gets it gets slammed on the car by jmo and buddha and they tie me up and they take me inside it was like this whole thing wait wait where is that at i know i just thought about it i was like oh fuck that never got uploaded to youtube but we all played on our streams all the time <laughs> i have the video i should have fucking sent it to you because it's a sweet piece of content you have to see it's all like cinematic and like <laughs> Um, the, it, I actually have an emote of it. You can see like me getting slammed on the car by JMO and Buddha over and over. It just plays like 
you get slammed over and over. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> uh, I'll make sure you get to see it somehow at some point. That you know what? I'm gonna just have to come by your stream and request it. That's yep, just, you're gonna that's have to just, come by the stream and request how it's it. Gonna, and I'll play it. That's just how it's gonna have to be. Uh, no, so so how did you guys? Uh, how did you end up linking up with the uh, the glow stick dudes? I, I think we talked about it a little bit, but I don't, again, I was fucked up. So yeah, so this story <laughs> runs deep. Uh, I've known Glow Stick, uh, Glow Stick Willie since 2015. I had a roommate who lived with me here in Michigan. Um, he met them somehow at a festival, heard about them. He was sitting in the living room every day watching the, these videos of this band called Glow Stick Willie, and they're playing 30 minute jams, and J Mo's never stopping shredding and soloing and stuff. And I'm like, I don't get it. Uh, it's not for me, you know, like. <laughs> Then they came up. Uh, they came up here to Mount Pleasant, Michigan, and I went and seen them. Partied with them all night. Got blackout drunk. They killed it. They came up a week later. Played at like an underground. Um, we had like an underground warehouse that we called the Hollow and stuff, and had bands come play till like five in the morning. Glow Stick Willie came and crushed it till like five in the morning. We went back to uh, my buddy's house, and he had like a big basement with a bar and i was like a dab tender like feeding them dabs and shit at the bar and then in 2016 i went to my first willy town and then i really became a fan of glow stick willy and you know i wasn't really like super close with these guys at this point they, they knew who i was and stuff but uh we weren't like close or anything and then in 20 late 2016 they started streaming after right after me. I had started streaming in 2016, so I was like, "Oh, oh, you guys are gonna stream too?" You know, like sick, like. And the rest is history. I've been, you know, following them on Twitch and been, you know, active in their chat. And eventually, they realized I was streaming and doing shit too, and like gave me a chance to make content with them. And uh, as soon as they got partnered, I was like one of the first people they invited to be on Team Glow Stick, and I've. I've just pushed to make better content and do stuff with them, and and it's been a beautiful thing. Yeah, absolutely, man. The 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 it, it's uh I I know that you weren't because you weren't really a big fan of jam, right? Like you're not a big fan of the jam band. Yeah, exactly. I was always a metal like a metalhead, you know, and mm -hmm. like and punk rock, you know. You've seen my videos and shit. Yeah. Uh, but Glow Stick Willie could pull that off on top of the jam stuff. They wouldn't, you know, they incorporate all the metal and stuff. So that's how they grabbed me and that's how they got me, you know? Yeah. Yeah, for sure, man. No, I, I feel that. I feel that. I mean, I was, I mean, I'm a big fan of jam band music, but also metal. So, like, <laughs> it, for me, it was, uh, it, it was, it was a natural progression in, in fandom, right? Like, these yeah. guys got it all. Um, but but yeah, man, they they uh, they definitely have a a unique thing going on. Just like, in in everything they do too, right? Like it's not just like, you know, the band itself, but like their their stream is fucking unique. Their, uh, you know, what they do, how they all bring it together. I really do think it was fucking like I I, I absolutely love what they do, and they uh, and I feel like I feel like Willie Town was like. Like TwitchCon, but like cool without well, without yeah, all yeah. the rules. Like, you know, everybody parties and like uh, <laughs> there isn't like this fakeness about it where everybody's trying to get something from each other. Yeah. You know, like which I watch a lot of TwitchCon and it does kind of feel like that. You know, like oh, I have to go stand with this person to be, you know, yeah, my image. You know, I mean, sure, maybe underlying there is some of that stuff, but I really do enjoy like hanging out with all those people at Willie Town, like. Like Daniel DK is such a sweet dude. And yeah, I fucking love hanging out. I'm going to uh, hang out with him this Thursday in Detroit. His band's coming to play. He's gonna throw me on the guest list. Oh hell go yeah! Check that shit out. Are they playing with um? Are they playing with Elsie Binks? Do you know? Or is that the band they're playing with? No, I uh, maybe maybe I don't know. I I thought it was just a, a solo show, but oh they, oh they he's a, only gonna be doing it or something. Oh he's just gonna be playing by himself. He's playing with uh with the ba his band Exciter. Oh, he is playing with Exciter. Where are they playing? Yeah. Uh, Smalls Bar, Smalls Bar in Hamtram Mich Hamtramck, Michigan. Hamtramck. Hamtramck. Uh. That's the twenty seventh, Thursday. 
Thursday. Oh, you were just watching EBX? Well, I because I know uh, Aaron has a, a gig this weekend, too. So I thought it would be dope if they're fucking they were playing together. Smalls Bar, Detroit. All right, hold on. Let's see where we. I'm I'm getting to the bottom of this, you guys. Hey, you about to you about to make a trip and come party with us? That would actually be pretty dope. Uh, you and Reyna? Um, well, uh, I'm probably gonna be working all weekend, so that's lame. But where? Dude, I, is this... No, this is downtown. I'm an idiot. Um, why doesn't it give me any information? This is... Yeah, there's not a lot of information. Like, I don't understand why they're... Why would why would they do this to us? Thirst wave. That's a... Dope. If you scroll down, like, enough, it's there. But even still, oh, there's not I a see. lot of... This, hey, there it is. This is it? Excited! Oh, okay, so it's a Thursday. Yep, it's Thursday. It's this Thursday. That's fucking dope. Good for them. Exciter. Now, now Exciter, are they... Um, now, I, I kept hearing that... Because uh, I've heard of them before, but I've, I've never... I wikipedia it. <laughs> and, uh, it told me it told me that they're a Canadian band named after the song from Judas Priest. Yes. I'm and that they were real culty and popular but, you know, back in the 80s. Oh, and the, the two original dudes that DK plays with are the original dudes, but they left the band and other people continued the band and then they left the band and then the original dudes came back, hired DK. It's a whole thing. I see now. I see now. Yeah, because because they're from the 80s and shit or shit from the 70s. Damn. From the 70s. But they got real big in the 80s, you know. Damn. In Canada. In Canada. <laughs> they have several Junos, eh? <laughs> <laughs> we got a lot of Junos, eh? Uh, 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 this is really cool. Jacques and Rob Cohen. Well, there you go, guys. So if you guys are in Michigan and in Detroit and want to hang out, go go do that. Go. I think they're doing one in Cincinnati, too. Cincy? The first night, the 26th. Mm. It's in Cincy. Nice. That's, that's still too far. <laughs> it's that's a- still too far. <laughs> no, no. I'd rather party in Detroit anyways. What? Why? Because, uh, I mean, well, my mom's in Detroit. And my oh, fam- nice. Most of my family is in Detroit. Are you? Uh, you know, I have roots in Detroit. I'm from Detroit. You're from Detroit. Nice. Yep. What? 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 What part? Uh, like uh, Livonia. Uh, yeah. Uh, where was born, dude? Uh, Garden City, Michigan. Okay. Is that right? That might be right. <laughs> I don't know. Ask that flat Fanta Jameson. Yeah, yeah. Taylor. Well, my mom's in the chat. She Taylor. Tell me where I was born. At. Taylor, Michigan. The, my mom lives in Taylor. I was not I born see. there. Oh, okay. That's where that's where uh, she's at. Okay, okay. Stay t- awake, step daddy. Dude, now do, do you do? You, here's the thing. Here's the problem that I have with Michigan. Okay, I'm I'm originally from Michigan, uh, but I feel like I feel like the roads up there are just shit. Like I just I oh, yeah. I don't like the roads up there. I don't care for that whole like uh, if, if you know everybody's responsible for their own car collision thing. What's that called? I forgot what that's called. No fault, whatever that is. Uh huh. That no fault driving up there where everybody gets to like you can smash into somebody and it's or it's, someone can hit you from behind and everybody just takes care of their own shit, which is is fine. You but get coverage though, you know. You like... do get coverage. Okay, okay. I I don't know. It's just there's just something about Michigan that doesn't sit well with me. Also, in Michigan, didn't like when they first legalized weed. Didn't didn't they like lose money? Wasn't weren't they losing money when they first legalized weed? Well, I mean, I, that, I, I I'm not sure how true that is, but I could see that happening. You know, like it takes a minute to. All I know is now there it's billion billion dollar. Oh company, yeah. You oh know, yeah. Like, yeah. It's it. I think they they said some that that now the weed business is like a sixty billion dollar comp uh, yes, thing every year. Yeah. Electric pay electric forest. Yes, that's that's nice. Rothberry is in. The, yep. 
Got nice. some, you got some nice fest up there. That's funny. I, I feel like, a, a, yeah, Electric Forest brought probably brings tons of money for the economy. Mm -hmm. And that's a big thing with festivals. You know, like the towns and the, the, the authorities, they hate like festivals. Like, you just bring in drug culture to our town and you bunch of hippies. And it's like, well, think about how much money these people bring to your economy. People come far and wide, spend money at all the gas stations and all the supermarkets and get ice and all the shit they need in your town, you know? Mm, yeah. Yeah. And put and money into the economy. And they're worried about a bunch of hippies. Those hippies ain't going to do nothing to you. Those the hippies, hippies safe out in the middle of the woods. Fucking <laughs> want to do, you know, everyone sits at home and does their drugs. What's wrong with sitting in the woods and doing your drugs? Right. And drinking, you know? It's like, just, just let the hippies fucking play, bro. You gotta you gotta let people do that. There was this really cool festival I used to go to when I was yeah really young, really young. I was still in high school. It was called Rainbow Farms, and it was a it was like a you know it was like a Willy Town or like a Hookahville or something you know one yeah. of those hippie festivals. But it wasn't around based around a band. It was based around this like you know just come and hang out. And I remember I saw Tommy Chong there, um, <laughs> which is fun, uh, but. Uh, but yeah, man, the, 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 the whole, they had to hire the Michigan militia just to hold, um, just, to, just to keep like the, the local cops at bay because they would literally set traps up for people going in and out. And so someone yeah. would leave to go get like a beer run or something and fucking the cops would come and shake them down. And it was, it was shitty. And this was back in like the late nineties. So I don't, I don't know how old you are, but I remember there was a time where I had to buy my weed in shady places and, and, and be, you know, like, keep that shit down. You didn't get it from me. You know, now we can just go into into stores and buy oh, weed. Oh, yeah. But I'll stand out front of the bar and somebody will hold the whole bag of weed out and the cop will be across the yeah. street. They'll be like, smell this, you know, this especially good... being in Michigan and having it be illegal. Exactly. There's, there was a time, but. Shit, what was I talking about? What were we just talking about? Uh, your uh, festival. And oh, Rainbow Farms. Oh, I'm so I'm sorry, dude. I'm, you're gonna have to work today. <laughs> That's, uh, it's okay. I'm used to working. That's what I do. <laughs> All I do is work. <laughs> uh, uh, no, but it was a really cool place, man. Uh, it, it was just really sad, but but it was like that. It was like you know this. It was in this small town in like east or western Michigan, like out. And uh, it, it was just like this really cool thing, really peaceful, but it ended up ending really terribly because it was owned by these two gay dudes and um, they, the local government really went for these guys and they had a, a son um, and they were trying to take their son away from them and uh, they, they, uh, there were some other things that went down, but what ended up happening was is that they were on their property because they actually lived on that property where they had the festival, and the cops were trying to come take their kids away, and uh, they fucking pulled out guns. They were like, fuck you. Yeah, Jesus. You're not taking my kids, and uh, they both ended up getting killed by the cops. It was just a horrible thing that ended up happening. That's so savage. Super like savage. Movie shit. Yeah, well, it, 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 they did a whole uh, write up in Playboy about it. Actually, it was. Uh, I, I didn't. Hold on. In, in Playboy, in the articles. Yeah, You're yeah. Between the articles. vagina lips and. <laughs> no. Yeah. Uh, what is it? Rainbow Farm Playboy article. It doesn't have pictures. Siege at Rainbow Farm. That's what it's called. Yeah. Siege at Rainbow Farm. Um, let's see. In 2001, a hippie campground famous for peace, love, and weed erupted in violence and death. Was it, uh, was it another Ruby Ridge or the collapse of of a failed utopia oh jesus and you were there at this exact festival like this, I, year? not not the year that they got raided okay. and shot and killed and stuff this was like a couple years after it because like it started going downhill and then it just it just went to hell see i want it, it was probably a few incidents like that that made it like you know the the authorities in these hippie festivals mostly have a like an understanding like like okay we know you're all sitting in there with tons of drugs and all that stuff <laughs> we're not gonna come in there though and bust you all we could because we know you're doing it but yeah yeah and and which which always threw me off well now I want to shoot some guns 
You don't, yeah, Nader, that's messed up, Naders. <laughs> <laughs> Nate, look, Naders is Naders is gonna go and shoot his Tommy gun just so he can blow off some steam here. Um, I'm I'm kind of interested in. Uh, I forgot. I forgot my. Uh, in 2001, a hippie campground famous for peace, love, and weed erupted into violence and death. Uh, on the day that he purchased Rainbow Farm, Tom Croslin said destiny had led him to the place. By the late 1990s, the farm would become a well-known stop on the hippie trail, a scenic overlook for the uh, migratory flocks of travelers and fish fans who crisscrossed the country. For thousands of blue-collar pilgrims who stopped there looking for a few days of fun and freedom in Michigan's vacation lands, it was a benevolent little campground, and on any other labor day they would have been there thousands uh, there would have been there thousands of happy stoners setting up tents for crosland's annual marijuana legalization fest a party he'd name roach roast oh yeah that's what that was called roach, roach roast, roast. Which, which is kind of a shitty gross name uh, yeah <laughs> <laughs> but on friday morning august 31st 2001 he was storming around telling the last of the local kids to leave god damn get the hell out of here crosland said and don't you dare come back just watch the news tonight oh my god crosland and his lover roland roly rome were in desperate straits they were facing drug and firearms charges brought against them by the local prosecutor scott Tet Tet Tetter teeter if they lost the case they were looking at serious jail time and the loss of their property under drug war forfeiture laws they had posted bail but it was now in danger of being revoked instead of showing up at a bond hearing that morning they had made the monu momentous decision to blow it off and stay on the farm they were going to fight for their rights but not in the courtroom <sighs> I, I you know like i just sounds I, like hippies <laughs> You know what, man? They're going to have to come and take it out of our courts. We can settle this here. <laughs> oh. Not in the courts. <laughs> oh, that's... It's so sad, though, man. It's, like, such a sad thing. Yeah. Um, Let's let's see. I, I want to get to the, the, the horror and, and bloodshed. Oh, my God. We're, <laughs> not, we're not reading all of this. That is not what's happening, y'all. Um, <clears throat> Wow. Uh, 100, by dawn on Labor Day, 120 law enforcement officers were on the scene, many along with the perimeter of Rainbow Farm. That morning, Brandon Peoples, an 18-year-old neighbor and regular at the campground coffee shop, decided to walk onto the farm through the cornfield and managed to slip past the cops. He was determined to convince Crosland to turn himself in. Crosland was pissed off to see him, but said he could use some help on an errand. He needed company on a mission to scrounge up some food from a neighbor's abandoned cabin about a, Jesus Christ. Crosland carried his Ruger and a two-way radio and stepped outside. People's, hol people's holding a feather. He said it was for good luck. Joined him. Oh, fucking hippies. <laughs> it's a good luck feather, man. <laughs> it's for luck, man. Never bring a feather to a gunfight. <laughs> We're going to tickle him. We're going to tickle the hate out of him. Um, Crosland carried... Okay. Uh... uh, uh uh, the two men stood by the door and listened for something, anything, a snap, a twig, a cough, perhaps any sound that would give away the position of F FBI snipers. The pair stepped down uh, uh, a two-track path to the south running parallels to the oil dirt of Pemberton Road and left Rome behind inside the farmhouse, also with the two-way radio. Um... When they returned to the farmhouse, they realized they had forgotten the coffee pot. So they went back to McDonald's house. Okay, goddamn. Um, Rome's son saw the news on his foster parents' TV. He knew Crosland had been killed. Oh, Jesus. In the next instant, people heard... Okay, here we go. When they returned to the farmhouse, they realized they had forgotten the coffee pot. So they went back to McDonald's house. While returning, stopped and on the steep knoll dubbed Mount This, a favorite spot of festival security workers because of its expansive views of the house and road. Crosland was catching his breath. Peoples bent down to tie his shoe. Then Crosland hushed him. I heard a noise, he whispered. Crosland called Rome on the radio to tell him they were almost back, saying, incoming. As he crept across the clearing, Peoples followed, looking down. He again tried to walk in Crosland's footprints and clutched the bun 
uh, coffee pot fiercely. Croslin looked into the garbage can, then stepped slowly around the rocks of a fire pit. Suddenly, he tensed and stared instantly at the dense underbrush. In the next instant, people heard shots and shouting. FBI snipers Richard Solomon and Michael Heffron popped up and shot simultaneously. Solomon hitting Croslin above the right eye with a three, uh, 308 that blew through the back of his skull, killing him instantly. He nearly fell fell on people's and his brains landed two feet away from his shattered head. Skull fragments raked people's face and he went down on his hands and knees shuddering and screaming, I'm hit. The agents moved quickly and placed him under arrest. The last thing he saw was uh, carted off was his plaid shirt lying on the woods uh, paces away from Croslin's lifeless body. Croslin never fired his gun. Wow. That's savage, dude. Uh, just imagine like standing there you're tripping balls or something. And some guy's skull explodes and the pieces of his skull just hit you in the face. Well, they were under siege, so it, so the FBI was already there. They had already raided because we skipped around. So, like, they knew, and they and, and, and because of Labor Day. And, and I remember we were supposed to go to this one, but I remember their, them saying that it was canceled, but people were going to go anyways. And then we heard about what happened, and we're like, oh, shit, glad we didn't go. Uh, but yeah, man, this was such a really, really cool place, and it's such a damn shame that it ended it like ended like this. Um, but you know, that's just how that shit goes, man. Um, yeah, and it takes things like that to um, to get to like how we are today, where shit doesn't really happen anymore. You know? Yeah, like there's no reason for that. Like people, no. uh, uh, people, you know, now can actually have these festivals without shit. I, I just never understood how they got the cops to play along because I remember going to these festivals and I remember going my first year I went to Hookahville, which is acoustic hookahs festival. Yep. And there was fucking sheriffs just walking around and I'm just like, where's what the fuck is even happening here? Like they have to see what's going on. Like how they are see. they know how but. are they just walking by and just not doing nothing? And it, it just I, I don't know what that is. I don't know if they're paying people off or what whatever the situation is, but that is to me, that's wild. It's still wild to me because, you know, uh, I'm not, you know, these festivals do tend to bring people in who are selling drugs and, yes. you know, have lots of it. Yes, that's and very true. you can end up in prison. You know, I've, I've met a lot of kids. I got stoned with with a few cops. I've gotten stoned with cops too, but it, but but when the cops are walking around watching people selling drugs in mass, like, that's weird to me. Yeah, but it's a uh, but I don't know. I, how, do, how do you know how they do it? I mean, you have more of a festival in than I do. Uh, the only thing I know is like, uh, you know, if you have good, if you're on good terms with your neighbors, and you go, if you go to like you're the band, and you go to city councils, and you're good with the, you know, like I know Glow Stick Willie is good with their city council and like the and, and the cops and stuff. They know them because they do a lot for the community. Mm. You're bringing stuff into the community money and stuff so there's got to be something that plays into that where it's like okay we'll turn a blind eye to this because we know what you do for the economy and the community you know mm -hmm. yeah yeah that it's it seems as like as far as i know that's it that's all i can yeah. guess right yeah and it's not like the bands and stuff it's not like you, these bands are driving in with fucking pounds of drugs in their fucking yeah, thing, you know it's fault, the fans you know? yeah it's the fans that come in and bring this shit and bring the party goods so you know it's not the band's fault um uh, yeah man it's it's it's, it's fucking it's people are gonna do what people are gonna do and uh, you know people have always sold drugs in mass and, and kill and you know whatever people do human shit you know it's not mm. a band trying to throw a festival and make their money and do their thing is not causing this yeah yeah exactly so man, how did you uh, end up getting into music? Do you come from a musical family? Are you um, are you the black I, sheep? How did you end up? Because <laughs> that's I, I, usually I how it works. I would say I'm kind of a black the black sheep of my family, but um, you know, obviously my mom and everybody still really supports me and stuff. Uh, I my brother tried to play guitar, and my brother still does play guitar. But when I started doing it, he gave up, so I picked up his guitar. I, you know, and I had friends who were played music and stuff my buddy who i play with jake gay who you met at willie town uh he you know he always inspired me i remember meeting him in, in junior high and stuff and he uh 
he was super good and it inspired me to pick up the guitar and i've been playing ever since i was 13 or 14 you know yeah so uh, oh, you know like 12 13 years now nice no more than that. Did you ever do any of the lessons thing, or are you all no all self taught? No self taught. You know? And you do you uh now I know you play the bass and guitar. Or do you play anything else? Uh yeah, I dabble on the drums. Uh, I, I can mess around on a keyboard. You know, uh, I have ma- mainly been considering myself like a vocalist these days. I've enjoyed mm-hmm. singing a lot. You know, I love singing. For every, even if people don't like my singing, I like singing for people. You know, that's yeah. how I feel. <laughs> you just, it's just like whether you like it or not, I'm yeah, gonna yeah. do it. Which is funny because I know people who are so very good at singing, but like, it's like I don't want to sing in front of people. Like, well, that's not fucking fair. Like, it's not fair to be good at singing and not sing for people. Well, you know, it's a very vulnerable thing, man. Totally. You know, like it, it, when someone doesn't like your voice. They don't like, they essentially don't like the way that your, your face is shaped. They don't like the way you push your air out of your, you know what I mean? They don't like, there's just, there's so much, you know, they don't like how the sound comes out of your nose and shit. So it's like, they essentially, they, when they don't like your voice, they, they essentially don't like what you're made of, you know, like you as a, as, as a human. the thing I've learned as a musician and a, and a streamer and a performer is that there will always be people who feel like that, you know? Hmm. And then there's going to be people who fucking adore you and idolize you, you know? Hmm. Like, you're going to get both of those things. Yeah. Putting yourself out there and trying shit, you know? Yeah. No, no, no matter what, if you're going to put yourself out there, you're going to get... <laughs> people are going to say something. You get fans and you get haters. And, oh, yeah, man. And, and haters are just as good as fans, you know? Haters mean that you're doing something right, you know? Right, if they're going to hate. So tempted to hit WSEG sings a song with you. You do whatever you got to do, Robbie, but uh, <laughs> I'm tr- trying to talk to my boy here. Uh, <laughs> you know, the, the, uh, Let's hear that beautiful voice, dude. Oh, God, no. The, the, this voice is terrible. I, I, I do so I, much. Well, I did, I did get to hear you sing the boob song. I, did, I forgot. After we finally, after we finally got it, we did. And I did. It, and I couldn't. I couldn't find the lyrics for you, but that's fine. But but but, <laughs> JMO had them. JMO had, them. and he JMO had your lyrics. He did because I emailed them to oh, him, you, you. and he started <laughs> reading them to everybody. And he's like, "Look at these. What this says." <laughs> and I'm like, "Give me my lyrics. Those are private." <laughs> <laughs> well it's it's it doesn't make sense if you're just gonna start like saying it to people yeah there's the boobs they're all throwing boobs out thank Dude. you guys i appreciate the boobs uh yeah Bo- boobs uh boobs happened no uh, that one that was so fun though no i I'm, I'm just not i'm not much of a vocalist i I'm, I'm more of a background player so singing for me has been really hard it is it, it's taken a long time for me to get enough courage to even do it so anytime i see anybody singing i'm just like they're already cool because they had the fucking courage to go up there and and do that that that's a very yeah. again it's a very it's a very vulnerable thing man like you're you're really putting yourself out there well <clears throat> when uh when did you start discovering that you had a voice and you could start using it, you know, like you could sing as though? I've been doing it and, and since I was 14 and stuff, when I was in a band, my first band, uh, emo, screamo band called Gas Mask Treachery, we were <laughs> terrible. Uh, it did some battle of the bands at a few local shitty VFW hall shows, you know, and, uh, and I would mostly just, Bleh! you know, like scream and stuff, but then I would like yeah. try to sing and I sounded so bad, you know, like... <laughs> I didn't have it figured out. When I really started getting good singing, I think, was when I um, I started doing this acoustic duo with my buddy Jake. And doing the acoustic duo, you're even more vulnerable mm-hmm. than you are like in a punk band. You know, like in a punk band, it's loud and noisy and you can sing and it doesn't matter if you suck, you know. Yeah. Uh, with the beautiful acoustic duos, like, I really had the time to work on my harmonies and my voice, you know, and, and it's, it's leveled me up. So I think it's been very... Uh, beneficial to do this acoustic duo thing not to mention i make way better money being than being in a band and have to split all the money with like four or five people 
<laughs> that's true. That's true. As a working musician, I mean, that mentality right there, that's where you got to think about it. Yeah. Because me and my yeah. wife, will do acoustic duo, and we just like, pff, we take that shit straight home, you know, like no yeah. splitting shit. But yeah. Easy money. <clears throat> yeah. No, I, 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 so do you do that? Do you do a lot of like gigging around, uh, around town? Yeah. I, uh, I have residence gigs here. Um, and I do a little bit of everything, man. You know, I've, I am in the production side of things. Like I can do lighting and sound and audio engineering and uh, obviously running stages and stuff. Can um, you can you like can you do everything like like hook it all up and yeah run, I can do I trust can do the whole production. Like, dude. Wow, yeah. that's awesome. Yeah, where'd you um, where'd you learn how to do that? Just by throwing myself into stuff, you know, like or standing there and watching people and listening and and. You know, making myself available, and mm. uh, you know, I've learned that like if you want to learn something, you just like like have to like really hyper focus on what's going on. You know, like mm. learning sound was hard and scary at first, but now I can walk up to any soundboard and just be like, "Well, I know the basics to any board. Here's the channels. Here's how it runs, dude. Just some stare of those, and look at it for a little bit, and figure it out. Some of these new boards, they're all like fucking digital and shit, like we're just like iPads and stuff. I'm just like, I don't, I don't know. Yeah, I learned on a on a 32 channel Allen and Heath digital board at the the bar where I like you know I host open mic, I DJ there, I played there with bands and DJ I, I two straws. Willie there, DJ two straws. That's right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So so yeah, dude, I do a little bit of everything, you know, mm. like just like to have my hands in everything and and some people tell me like oh you got to pick one thing john you got to just do this uh you can't you know it's not gonna work and, and you're spreading yourself thin it's like okay maybe that's true but i enjoy doing all of this you know i love what i do and what i get to do and i'm making money doing it so yeah yeah i mean that's that's the best part about it right it is like um you get to a point where you get to like make money, which is like to me is the it's mind blowing. Yeah, exactly. Like d- getting paid to do this is is is, is do crazy. fun stuff. I get to drink and party and <laughs> play with music and 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 get paid better than I would at any normie job. You know what? It, you know what pisses me off, man. I was just like, so I do have a day job, right? And and I like my day job. I cook for old people. It's nice at a, at an old folks home. I'd rather cook for old people than rich people. I'd rather. Here's the kicker: they're old, rich people. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> but they're cool. They're mo- they're mostly cool. There's only like one or two who just are like, I would not mind if you died of old age. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you know what really grinds my gears? Well, the, it, what really grinds my gears is is that I um I work all week and I only work part time, so it's not like all my life goes here. But you know, I only made like six hundred bucks this week, oh for two weeks of work, and then like it, it, and then not even like ten minutes before finding that finding out how much I made because my wife she just basically takes care of finances. Um, uh, I had just submitted a song that we're, we're producing for a girl and I, I made $300 in like an hour and a half. And I'm just hey, like, see, that's the shit that blows my mind. And then I'm just like sitting here like, and, and like all in the same day, this happens, right? That all in the same day, I'm like, I only got paid $600, but then I only pay, I, only, I worked for two hours to make a beat, to make music. And I got paid like 300 bucks. And it was like the easiest. Like, it's not even hard. Like, I smoked weed and sat there and played on toys. Like, it wasn't yeah. hard at all. It was yes. fun. Um, it, it, and I'm just sitting here doing the math like this motherfucker. The problem is I don't have that all the time, right? Like, I'm not constantly inundated with making beats for people all the time. It, it, which I could probably do, but then I'm also doing... And coming to that whole, like, you know, doing all these different things because of podcasting, musician you know editor fucking uh you know videographer fucking you're making sound you can make revenue from all of those things and i know? think that that's important is what yeah, i'm yeah so you at. see exactly what i'm saying you're yes. explaining the same thing having all these yes. little things that you can have your hands in and make money from it and you don't always have all the, you know i don't always have a dj gig i mean i probably make the most money from being a dj that's probably where most of my money comes that's from that's tight 
because I'm one person and DJs are high paid to do weddings and stuff is like seven hundred to fourteen hundred dollars, you know, like and all I have to go is do is go like play the hits, you know, like and get paid a ton of money for doing it. Yeah. And I was thinking the same thing. It's like I could go to work at the restaurant and slave for ten to eleven hours for like a hundred and twenty bucks. Or I could go get drunk and 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 press play on a computer for four hours and make three hundred bucks. You know, like. let's go. No, it's 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 fucking ridiculous, man. And so, uh, because before the pandemic, I, you know, I I mean, this was my life. I was playing gigs, you know, recording for people, whatever, whatever came up, right? And I and the podcast, whatever. However, and I was cobbling up a, just enough money to make it, and then the pandemic came and took my job. Uh, I fucked it all up, so now I'm like back at a job. It's like it's so weird to be back at a job after like seven years of sort of calling your own shots and then having to work with people and shit. Like it was just such a strange yeah. thing going yeah. back there. Mine and- was the opposite. I worked got nonstop, full time job. You know, gave my life away. Didn't have time to do what I loved. Then the pandemic hit, and I sat and I said, "When shit comes back, I'm gonna do th- what I love. I'm gonna build my business. I'm gonna and." And I'm going to make money doing it. And I'm not going to fucking work in a kitchen anymore. I'm going to get out of the, this normie job shit. Mm. And I'm so close to it. Like, I'm so close. I, I work two days a week in the restaurant. Hell yeah, and, man. And, and, and gig about three or four times a week, you know, okay. and I'm making money on Twitch. And and uh, it's, it's incredible, man. It's incredible that I've to step outside myself and look and be like, you, you've built this business. You've created a reality set your goals and you're working towards them and making it happen yeah yeah and and that's like i don't know if there was ever a point in your life S- uh, silk a marsh welcome Silka. welcome welcome thank you so much for that follow um was there ever a point where you felt like that was completely unattainable like like the idea of being completely self-sufficient and i know you're still working a couple days a week but like was that ever a moment where where you just like when, never thought you would even get this close to it? There was a point where I let it go, where mm. I completely given up on it, didn't think about it anymore. I, you know, I had even like quit music and uh, and now it's now that I do what I do, I, I would never get to that point again. I would never stop playing music. I don't see myself ever going back at this point. You know. Mm. Yeah. only forward and then it's a ton of work man it's it's been a ton of work i've been stressed i'm feeling my fucking all my hair's falling out and uh you know like i don't have all this time for myself anymore but i'm doing what i love it's like fuck i didn't get to go to the beach or anything like all summer but like but man i like got to have a lot of fun i played a ton of shows uh you know like i'm doing what i love yeah and getting paid for it yeah yeah that that that's the that's one of the drawbacks is like man i would love to go see this band that's coming to town but i gotta play a show that night i gotta play my own show and i'm happy with that i'm like well yeah. i'd rather play my own show than you know yeah. i still like to go see bands and stuff it's important to me but yeah man but it's like you know there's nothing better than playing your own shit man yeah. doing your own thing and making your own moves that's 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 what it's all about yeah man that that it, the the hardest thing for me was like going back to work and trying to get a lot like the boss thing was okay but it was really the co-worker thing because i'm so not used to like having people like that i have to interact with and then i had this one crazy girl who thought she was the boss of everybody in the in, yeah. the, in my kitchen and they're like i was like oh my god i forgot that you kind of people exist and i have to deal with that <laughs> Like, I say that shit all the time. I'm like, I can't wait till I don't have to work with like people like you guys. Like, <laughs> like I working on a team sucks because not everyone is a team player. Like, right, right. Yeah, it, some people are just out for themselves and like they don't even like like the funny sabotage it. Well, and then some. You know, some people are just going like they're just doing right. Like they don't even realize they suck. They don't even realize that they don't work right. You know, like they're not. They don't. They don't even recognize that their life sucks and that like they're making the same mistakes over and fucking over. And they, they like some people are just not self aware. And no, that, and, and I get that. You know, like I, and, like I said, I was blindly I had given up and was just walking. Well, if I get this next job, I'll be happier. And I see people that well, I'm going to quit this job and go somewhere where it doesn't suck. Like 
Like, well, newsflash, I've been to this place and this place and this place. They all suck. Like, <laughs> newsflash. You people are all the same everywhere. Like, <laughs> they, they you're are. miserable and we all hate our lives because you sit here six days a week and you don't do anything and your boss asks you to work overtime and you do and yeah. you think that he's going to care about you, but then he fires you, you know, like. Yeah. No one cares. No one cares. You're replacing. You can show up on your day off to help and be fired the next day. I've seen it happen. You <sighs> know? Or, or nobody even thanks you or cares to think about things. And that's the thing that, that the great thing about my job is that I actually like everybody I work with. And, and once I got past a few bumps, like that one crazy girl doesn't work there anymore. So that's good. But like once I got past some of the shit and I made myself clear to my coworkers, like where I stand on shit. We're fine now. Like, the crew's great. My boss is good. Like, you know, everyone's cool. And it's one of those jobs because I work in a kitchen where everyone's cussing. You can play rap music. <laughs> you can fucking play metal and shit. Yeah, well, that's how kitchens are. You know? that's, uh, everybody's cussing and, 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 and talking shit. And, <laughs> and like, it, I fit right in. I, it, it, that's just where I'm at. And we're also surrounded by, like, rich old people. <laughs> So, yeah. like, we're in our little island of, of like, profanity <laughs> and metal, <laughs> and then we have to, like, go out and be nice to the old people. <laughs> yeah, dude, totally. I work I work at an oyster bar um, on the Bay of Michigan, on Lake Michigan, and uh, it, it's, like, the most prestigious, fanciest restaurant in town, you know, but then there's me, like, this fucking rock and roll asshole in the back screaming and yelling and, like, you know... <laughs> But it's like the most baller people, like Amy Smart. You know, who Amy Smart. She was just in to eat the other day. You know, uh, uh, she's she a wrote, she's a singer songwriter. No, no, she's an actress. Right? She was in Rat Race, Road Trip. Uh, oh, like, um, the Butterfly Effect, Crank. Oh, I do know who Amy Smart. She's the blonde girl. You know who she is. You totally know who she is. We're all gonna know who she is. Wait, she came to your Gosh. restaurant. Yeah, she owns a winery. Like, oh. uh, like just a few miles away from the restaurant. What? She doesn't act anymore. I don't think so. No, she's she she doesn't look like the picture you just showed. She's all old now. Oh, for real? Like, almost sixty or some shit. No way. Oh my god, I do remember this lady. She was the girl with the whipped cream boobs, right? With <laughs> in Varsity Blues. <laughs> is that is that her? I was can't that see. her? Is hold there on. A name on it? Let me see. Hold on. Let's Zoom see. Zoom in on there. Hold on. Whip. Hold on. Let me take it off of this. Whip. <laughs> <laughs> hold on. I'll come right back. Bring up some other stuff. <laughs> hold on. Uh, varsity. Blue. Yeah, Raina, come up and visit. I told you guys I can. Uh, I can get you a gig. She, she was the girlfriend. Uh, images. Uh, is that is that Amy? Hold on. <laughs> Ali, I, Ali. Oh, ew. <laughs> oh, God damn it. Uh, I, Al, I, Ali Larder is the one who you're talking about. Thank you very much. Yes, I'm mom. I appreciate that. I appreciate fact the research. Checking. Fact check, fact check. Yes, okay, I'm so, the fact check. so Amy Smart, let's, let's just bring up Amy Smart. So Amy Smart, she doesn't do all that anymore. She's not into it. She was born in 1976. Oh, okay, okay. I mean, she, uh, last show, oh, she's still, she's still acting. She's still acting. What did she do? She did, uh, she's in Stargirl. She's in a, in, in a show. Never heard of Stargirl. She's in Tyson's Run. She's in 13 Minutes, 100 Candles. Look, at she's been acting this whole time and you didn't even know. <laughs> <laughs> you like just thought, you know all these people do this now I'm like oh now I just have a winery or a vineyard and I and I'm just taking it easy and I'm gonna a lot of celebrities do that they'll they do. like buy houses here in my city I live in a very like uh you know where I live so yeah. it's like very vacation destination mm -hmm. you know yeah 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 so i mean so yeah yeah people will come up there cuz uh who, who you know, like uh jeff uh jeff What's what's uh what's Numbnuts' name, Raina? Jeff, not Jeff Bridges, but he owns Jeff Goldblum. No, Jeff. He <laughs> owns the Purple Rose Theater. Have you heard of the Purple Rose Theater? Jeff Daniels. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Uh, yes, I'm up. Jeff Daniels. Uh, he lives in Chelsea, Michigan, and he actually owns a theater up in Chelsea. 
um, that uh, is pretty popular theater. Um, and uh, so Jeff Daniels was the guy from, um, he was uh, Dumb and Dumber, the other guy. Yep. Yeah. Um. Not. Not. Not Jim Carrey. Not Jim Carrey. <laughs> not Jim Carrey. <laughs> Madonna owns a winery too. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Eminem, I think, has some restaurants and shit in Detroit or something. Uh, well, uh, does he? Oh, there's Mom Spaghetti or whatever. Yeah. But I don't know if he is actually affiliated with. Oh. Him. Okay. Mom. I know he went there as like a meme and was like serving spaghetti one time. But uh. I I can't spell Mom Spaghetti. Yeah, Mom Spaghetti in Detroit. <laughs> there you go. What's I good? gotta go there, dude. I'm here. Look at those prices. I can do that. Look at that. And look at the menu. It's very easy. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I like it's menus simple. like this. Have, have you ever been to? Uh, have you ever been to In and Out? No, I've never been to an In and Out. I, I would. I would love to have In and Out. You know, I love the the delicacies of things that I can't have here. <laughs> I know. In northern Michigan. Well, if, if you're ever in Texas, you can be in, in and out too. You know, if you're not in California, I thought Texas is a Whataburger. It is, but but uh, In and Out has migrated to Texas as well. So it's in California. Uh, Joe Rogan goes to Texas. And fucking it, it the West the, Coast follows him. To be fair, it was there before Joe Rogan. <laughs> Bol- Bolognese sandwich, weird. Yeah, what, that is kind of weird. Bo- Bolognese. 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 Eminem's restaurant, Mom Spaghetti, to get Super Bowl. Yeah, look, look. No, I think it is Eminem's. Does it say it's his restaurant? I think so. I think it is Eminem's restaurant. Eminem's restaurant. Look, it says it right here. Right here on Google, because you know you can trust all right, Google. All right. Bowl in nays. <laughs> Listen, I ain't fucking fancy. I don't have fancy learned tongues, okay? I didn't go to fancy private schools, okay? <laughs> I don't have fancy learned tongues. <laughs> I, uh, I do that to all purposely mess up the uh, the saying of like French words and stuff. <laughs> Sorry, I did like all dumb. <laughs> You're goddamn right, Robbie, and I'm going to hold it against you. Oh, uh, <laughs> no, I, the other day I was making a TikTok video and I purposely said uh, Jimmy Buffet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Jimmy Buffet. <laughs> and people in the comments are like, Jimmy Buffet. <laughs> it's like that, it's like that girl who uh, who did, uh, have you seen that video where she's like, hey, which I warmed up in the micro wave. <laughs> she calls it the micro wave and it's like. She did it on purpose, but, but like and without context, you see that video. It's like, oh, shut up! Like, really? Like, <laughs> who says that? Who is doing that? Uh, fuck, I can't even Mike, think who it is. Micro wave. Yeah, I, I don't even know how to Google that. I'm gonna make uh, a bologna bolognese. You better quit, Nicktronic. You better get out of here. Bolognese. <laughs> Naders, are you leaving or are you just saying peace to that? Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Naders is leaving. All right, buddy. Have a good day. Go go treat Tommy well. Um and no, it was it was to me. Oh. All right. Listen, I'm confused, so now I'm gonna try to find who says micro microwave. If you just YouTube girl says microwave weird or something. Oh like... yeah, girl says microwave weird. Weird funny. Yeah, that's it. That's totally her. The top one's Nigella. Milk, full fat, which I've warmed in the microwave. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up, bitch. But I still need a bit of milk, full fat, which I've warmed in the micro wave. Wait a second. Okay, hold on. Now, is is this how is this how motherfuckers? Oh, he was saying by me. No, it was to me. Oh, okay. I see. Wait a second. Oh, you said that. Hold on. <sighs> We're moving on. We're moving on. Um, y- you know what I need to um. <laughs> I need to sample is, have you seen AOC? I, I'm not trying to slip into politics here, but have you, do you know who AOC is? No, I don't know who AOC is. And and if you're trying to slip into politics, I stay out of that. No, 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 I'm not. I'm not. It's just, uh, these. this is something I want to sample. So I want to sample a micro wave because I have a sample pad here. Like, like, oh, you can't hear it. I can hear it. Yeah! What? Nice, nice. Okay. So I want to add micro wave, and I want to add this AOC dancing 
at town hall she is such a weirdo okay so so this is so funny these people are talking oh, no, shit to her it's housing she's for helping I know, but I'm just telling you the point. It's like, bitch, I'm holding my politicians accountable. Hold on. I just want to show you this one part, and then we'll get far away from here. <laughs> so so AOC, by the way, is is like a Democratic, uh, someone out of, uh, she's a Democrat uh, a representative out of New York. And she was like, she has like a bunch of followers on Instagram and she's totally, and she's like young. She's kind of hot, you know? So like, she's I pretty, see that. she's kind of, she's kind of hot. And young. She's pretty popular, you know, with young people. So she's like all about like, you know, yeah, go fucking social justice and all that shit, which is great. You know, nothing wrong with social justice, but she just is one of those people who take it to the next level, like whatever. So now people are turning on her because she's voting for all this money to go to war over to Ukraine. And so these people are like yelling at her. They hate her now, which is so funny to me. But there's this one part where she gets that. Look, she's like, she don't even care because she knows that she's protected. But watch what she does. This is so funny to me. Respectfully. Hold on, hold on. Why y'all been talking for 20 minutes, okay? We know why. <laughs> Hold on, I just, just this, just give me. Okay, ready? I'm not allowed, I'm not allowed to be in a room with the lights turn off. It gets a little. That's one of the things. Yeah, we know that. All right, all right, listen, all right, listen, listen, okay, listen. Okay, so that right there. Okay, listen, listen. She does the whole like Rosie Perez, whatever uh -huh. thing. She's fucking pandering and she's trying to it, like, like to me that just, it, I fucking, it makes me just hate this person because she's like literally to me, that's like her talking to children. She's like trying to get children's attention. Yeah. Do something that, that she knows will get people's attention. And, you know? Listen. Li yeah. Listen, Linda. And, and like this, yeah. this show and talk like this. She does not talk like that. Like she does have an accent, but she is not like listen, listen. You know, she's not like right, hardcore right, right. Puerto Rican um, accent from New York. It just bothers me, so I want to sample it, and that's all. That's it. <laughs> that's the whole thing. I don't want anything else to do anything else with that. I don't want to talk about it. But it. Uh, but in any case, yeah, uh, that's that's just things happening going on, that's going on here. Uh, so so you're. Not cool, not cool. Yeah, she's an idiot. She's a fucking idiot. Like, if you've ever seen, like, there's this guy who pranks her and he's like, oh, look at that big, beautiful, sweet ass or something. And she's like, you want to do a selfie? Hold on. Now we got to, like, go look at that because now that's in my head. It's like a prank guy, AOC. Big ass prank. Uh, this shit is so funny to me, though. Uh, heckled. Big booty Latina. <laughs> Big booty Latina. Hold on, where is it? Big booty Latina. Where is it? Does that? she even have a big booty? I didn't. I didn't like see it or notice it. I know. I don't know. Oh, uh, let's see. Oh, it's this guy. Whoever. Latina, I love you, AOC. You're my favorite. She wants to kill babies, but she's still beautiful. You look very beautiful in that dress. You look very sexy. Look at that booty on AOC. That's my favorite big booty Latina. I love it. My favorite AOC. Nice. Well, she to does have an ass. She's, She's got some booty, dude. Woo! I love it, AOC. Hot, hot, hot like a tamale. <laughs> Which is kind of fucked up. This is Alex Stein. I think he's a uh, some sort of reporter. Hey, butts. Hey, Morby. We were just looking at butts. Butt sluts. <laughs> By the way, the name of the community is Butt Sluts, so welcome. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, it just happened to be that. <laughs> my uh, my buddy Jake wrote a song called Butt Sluts. What's it about? It's about butt sluts and being after your nuts. Butt sluts or after, after your... your nut. Oh, oh, butt sluts are after your nut. Like, like she's aggressively chasing you down so... to ex extract your nut. But only in her butt. It goes, it, dude. It, you, I'll have to say it's talking so funny. It's like she so butt slut. She's after my nuts. It's all like fucking like Motley Crue ish, you know? Like <laughs> it's hilarious. Dude. She's after my nut. 
Yeah, yeah. <laughs> She's coming for me. <laughs> Oh look, look, he says she wants to kill she wants to kill he said she wants to kill babies, but she has a big beautiful Latina booty. Yeah. Babies, but she's still beautiful. Oh she's you still look very beautiful She night. wants to kill babies, but she's still beautiful. Oh god. Um he, I posted this thing today, uh or maybe it was last night on TikTok. And I'm like one violation away from being kicked off the platform. But in this video uh, sorry guys. In this video Sorry guys. Uh, this is the portion of the show where we're just gonna watch videos now. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. We're, we're we're gonna actually talk. I'm just now. I'm just ADHD, honestly. Uh, oh, by the way, Katy Perry's clone malfunctioned. If you guys didn't know, uh, her phone, her clone. Look, watch her eye. All right, I can't see it. Never mind. There you go. Can you see that? Her, <laughs> her she malfunctioned. Uh, Not real. Okay, so Selena. Who is a oh god damn it? Girls, his teen pregnancy. And what do you what do you have to say? I mean, everybody. Okay, never mind. So Selena, there's this video of Selena. I don't know if you know who Selena is, but she's a, a Mexican singer, and she is um, one of the problems. With she is she is uh, uh, there's a video that I just found where she's talking about how she's pro pro life because she's a Mexican Catholic, right? And that makes sense. Because Mexican Catholics are fucking very conservative people. I know because my mom is one. Uh, <laughs> and so there, uh, th this whole fucking thing. Look at this. Look at this. These are were different times. I know she would have evolved and grown. But then wait for it. Plus she was super young and still conditioned by her religion. With Chris, she was totally different person. Okay. Listen to what the other people tell them to believe. Okay. <laughs> Common liberals. <laughs> Girl, if she evolves and grows, she's not going to want to kill babies. Only immature, unevolved <laughs> people want to kill babies. <laughs> nobody wants to kill babies. <laughs> simply about no, simply about nobody being obligated to sustain someone's life with their bodily resources. Grow up. <laughs> I can grow up and realize it's your choice. <laughs> Oh shit. So this is this is what's been awesome. This is what has been so awesome about TikTok is that I've been really able to like dip in and see like where people's uh where people's where the thermometer is, you know, yeah, where people yeah, are yeah, sitting and stuff. And and like this is such a relevant post because there was somebody who wrote in here, it's like keep her name out of your mouth. And I'm like, bitch, yeah. this is a re relevant post. Okay, because Right now, this country is going through this whole abortion thing and stuff. So it's like, th I think this is relevant. And so I've been just getting a kick out of all these different fucking comments because things are going decently over here. And then I posted this thing. I'm sorry that I'm just showing my videos. and, and But I didn't know what... Bo Do you know what boozy chips are? Do you know who boozy is? Boozy at... Uh, what's his name? Boozy Badass? Uh, no, I don't. Uh -uh. Boozy Badass is a rapper. And apparently he has his own chips. I didn't fucking know he had his own yeah, chips. Dude, you fucking, is that your, your your highest viewed TikTok there? That shit? Oh, Whoa. no. Fuck no. I got like one that's like a million. So like you crushed on TikTok, huh? I'm starting to. I'm starting to crush. But it's like fucking, I, I, like I said, I have like a bunch of uh, violations. So like if I get that's another. That's what it takes, dude. You got to be controversial, you know? Like... Well, I mean, this show is fucking, this is, we, we, and by the way, yes, I'm mom, religion and abortion we've talked about it here it's a music podcast but we we, we talk about whatever yeah um, well, and as long as it as long as i am careful about what i say and don't say anything incriminating i'm smart enough to not be like yeah i think that's fucked up you know and i don't i stay i you know i stay no, no, neutral no. And, 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 fucking and everywhere i'm like, not yeah and i'm not trying to get you i'm not this is not a gotcha type yeah, of show yeah, i don't yeah. give a shit if you if you voted for trump or if you voted for fucking byron <laughs> i don't care like and that's the thing that sucks is that we're we're in this we're you know this country's so fucking divided by that bullshit and and so like i i i can see why you want to stay out of it it's like do you have family who's who's like won't talk to each other because totally, of this shit yeah yeah I family hate fights my you know my my own siblings i get all heated about it and it's like i don't care and i'm happier for like uh not caring you know and not like yeah getting all so involved the less i see about that the happier i am you know my own life yeah absolutely you, you just staying out of it like the 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 
I think the important the, the 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 crappy thing for me is that I'm just a glutton for punishment, and I just want to know like the horrors of life right now. Like I was tell like because my wife is is similar to it. Like Raina, like she's like I'm gonna I'm better off just not knowing. I was yeah. sitting here telling her about all the shit that Russia has been up to and what we've been up to, and she's like, "What the fuck?" Yeah, like, yeah. Cause it's scary as fuck, dude. It is very scary where we're at right now as a, as a world, um, you know, as a world that seems to be on the precipice of a world war. So, but in any case, yeah, I feel that man. I feel that that staying neutral is one of those things. So, so you're a fence sitter. Yeah, yeah, you could say I'm a fence sitter. <laughs> Fucking fence sitter. What would goat versus fish say? Uh, goat versus fish would be like. Oh, dude, if you heard me say I'm a fence sitter, being a long-time goat that I am, you probably wouldn't be happy. Being the long-time goat that I am. Hey, I've, I've <laughs> been a goat since day one. I never sat on the fence. I, I, there was no question about it. Do you, I was a goat. Do you feel like there's something about fish that you just want nothing to do with? or is, I mean, like, what is it about fish that you don't want to be? Yeah, to me, like a fish is boring and 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 mindless and and you know, there's I don't know, man. Like goats are metal and they're fucking yeah. they're crazy and they do parkour. You know, like That's when I'm true. thinking of goats, I'm like they're the fun ones. Goats are fun. <laughs> fish are dumb and. Blah, 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 blah. It's true. You you do see goat heads like on the cover of metal mag metal albums, right? Goats it's like are metal. Man. Goats are fucking metal. Dude, I think I think I don't do the see everybody. I, the thing I don't like is I've heard it seven hundred times. Like, oh, goat, the greatest of all time. That's why I choose it. It's like all right, that's played out. Like, yeah, cool, man. Yeah, get get that's a get not a, why I chose goat. <laughs> get a real reason, you fucking you're right, you're fucking right, you're poser. Right, you're really, <laughs> come on, be, make your own ideas here. Be original. Yeah, I. <laughs> Be original. Come original, man. <laughs> come original. You got to come original. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. You know, I like that. I like that. Now I feel like I, I can't steal it from you, but I do feel like I do feel like I'm with that. I, I you, you're absolutely right. I didn't ever think about it. I was always a fence sitter. I was always a fence sitter. Now well, I think you've got to have the. Fa- I've always told Gover Fish this too because he's always so worked up about the fence sitters. And all. Yeah, I'm like, yeah. I'm like, dude, you have to have the fence sitters. They create balance between the goat and the fish. There will always be fence sitters. You know, like it's just part of the game. Yeah. You you wouldn't have made the cards and the fence sitters if you didn't want them. You know, you need them and want them. Yeah. Yeah. I- they create uh, contraction and 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 diversity and and like. If it was all just goat and fish, everything would be perfectly balanced and equal forever, right? You know, <laughs> or maybe not, or maybe not, or maybe not. Uh, yeah, I, I, I definitely always say we we love fish too. Okay, you guys, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all can do whatever you gotta do, but you guys can be fucking slimy, scaly fish. That's fine with small little pea brains. I'm gonna be metal as fuck. Yeah, metal. <laughs> Fuck, baby. It's like, if, yeah, I would, if I was a goat, I would want to be that goat that was like, I don't care if you have to sacrifice my head. I want to be that goat that's on the metal cover with the fucking, you know, the star, you know, the star of, of blood. Uh, uh, the pentagram. Yeah, pentagram. Yeah, I want to be in the middle of the pentagram, fucking of blood with fucking fire in the background <laughs> and fucking, you know, like. Just, just well, and, well that, and that's that's like some Satanist shit, though, you know. But, but, but I mean, well, I'm, uh, you I'm, know, are, 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 you, are you into that shit? Are you against Satan? I am absolutely not against uh, against or for any of that shit. Here I go, staying neutral again. Uh, <laughs> Fence sitter. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not against Satan, but I'm not for Satan. I am right in the middle for Satan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I, Satan, he's cool by me, man. You mm. know, but, like I don't want not one of his followers. <laughs> Satan's cool with me, bro. Uh, <laughs> You ain't never hey, done Satan, that. if you're watching this, bro, we're cool, man. <laughs> we're cool, baby. We're cool. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. I mean, it did, I mean, that stuff is meaningless to me at this point in my life. It's like, For I don't, sure. I yeah, don't care same. about that shit. It's like, okay. Well, one it, fairy it, tale to another. Just, everything's fun for me. You know, like, no. nothing, nothing should be, you know, nobody wants to get canceled and how everything is. It's weird and you can't say stuff. But to me, in my mind, 
there's nothing that's taboo that you shouldn't be able to talk about. It's again, it's you know, like it's just words and stuff, man. We have yeah. fun. We talk about stuff. Like yeah. you should be able to consider everything and uh, and and form your own opinions on shit, and not be told what your opinion has to be. Yeah. No. I. <laughs> it, you know, and and I think that besides like a bipolar breakdown, I think that's what's going on with like Kanye West right now is that he's like. He's like literally fucking besides a bipolar fucking meltdown. He's at that point where he's just done with people trying to tell him what he can and can't say. Yeah. And so he's just decided to go and do the Trump. <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> just like getting, light it all he's on fire. Canceled like a motherfucker. He you know? is, man. And I'm waiting for Adidas. Like Adidas is. I'm waiting for Adidas to drop the shoe because because uh, his his Yeezys are on it. Adidas. Yeah. To drop. Let's see if they made that decision yet. Because uh, yeah, I saw you Adidas facing per- kicked out of the bank or whatever. Yep, J.P. Morgan Chase. But that happened before all the the him running his mouth and stuff. That happened all before. Um, so the pressure is just mounting. So they're just they just keep giving. They're just coming down on Adidas and calling them. And, and also, by the way, Adidas has ties to uh, the Nazis. <laughs> 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 because adidas was 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 uh uh outfitting the nazis and so was uh polo right ralph lauren polo i think they were doing it um there was a lot uh chap chaps is that one of them it, it's really it's it's really interesting it's really interesting some of these some of these uh some of these companies that were doing business with nazis are now doing business with uh chinese slave owners because <laughs> they have slaves in china the Uyghur muslims so now these same companies are like buying their cotton from slaves and shit. <laughs> it doesn't matter to these motherfuckers they don't care they no, don't care how they make that money they just like you better fucking bring that money here i made the puzzle it took me only two minutes oh that's a beautiful puzzle. Thank you, Moving Dutch, man. I appreciate you. <laughs> so tell me, uh, what what was your first song you learned on guitar? Yeah, I, it's crazy. I, I just did an interview with j the other day, and he asked me some of these same questions. So I already had the answers prepared. Oh, well, um, fuck you, j <laughs> Son of a bitch. <laughs> the first song I picked up and learned on guitar was... And it's weird because everybody, you know, learns like the basic ones, Smoke on the Water, Iron Man, or, or, you know, things that are very more basic. I was very unorthodox. I picked up the guitar and I learned Hypnotized by System of a Down. Um, What's that one? Is that the one that's like, wake up? No, 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 no. It's the one that's like, uh, mm-hmm. why don't you ask the kids at Tiananmen Square? Fashion the reason why they were there. Is that another popular? The name of the album was Hypnotized, so it's the title track off Hypnotized. Damn. But that was the first one I picked up. And, and That's learned. not, that doesn't seem like it would be that easy. It, it was fairly easy. And, and uh, you know, it made me <laughs> like, I went into it thinking, okay, all this shit is a. Uh, is he, well, it has this whole like um, intro riff part, you know. Mm-hmm. Are they using a seven string? <laughs> On seven string? Do they use seven strings? No, I don't think so. No, mm-hmm. it's one six string guitar and one bassist. Oh, so it's not that hard. No, I just some of those songs seem like they're some of their songs seem like they're really. Um complicated because of just maybe maybe it's just like the rhythms because they have like weird time signatures yeah and it's, some well that comes from like the drummer mm-hmm. and just the bouncy that like the the guitar riffs are actually a lot more simpler than you think you know like he's playing very like like it's like two just like two chords oh yeah two notes and like just playing them back and forth fast real fast motherfucker real so fast, so like, so you learn a, this hit, uh, hypnotized song, and it, w- were you singing it too, or was no? That- I couldn't. I couldn't sing. I could not sing and 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 play guitar at the same time until like recently, dude. In like the last three years, really I singing and playing together. Yeah. What what changed? I I have no idea, man. It just it came to a point where I realized I needed to do it. 
<laughs> You're like, I just gotta, I gotta do this shit. <laughs> yeah, like, okay, well, I, like I said, after the pandemic and stuff, like, okay, I'm gonna rely on myself to, you know, instead of li- relying on bands and stuff, I have to be the one to do the whole performance. Right. Because I never know if I'm gonna have a band again. <laughs> Which is fucking lame. Which is lame, dude. It's hard <laughs> being in a band. Like, I, creating a band is the hardest thing to do. Well. It's like being married to like four people. You have to split all the money. Everyone bitches and complains. Oh, you booked a show. I got to go to my kid's fucking birthday. Oh, my wife's anniversary. And, and especially the older you get, and people are having kids and getting married. And yeah. I'm like, fuck that, dude. I'm not going to have kids or get married. I'm trying to like travel the country and travel the world and play music and hey, do rock star stuff. And that's what I want to do. <laughs> it's like, fuck all the other shit. I feel like, like you want to sit in your hometown and have a kid with some shitty girl. Like it was, you know, yeah. Yeah. It doesn't want you to do anything. Right. No, that that's the man. That, that is the thing, man. Like, like when people have these dreams, Thank you for those claps. I'm gonna turn off these goddamn alerts. This is the thing, like small town dreams, man. When people just sort of sit around and they they have these these they they have dreams of getting out, but they just don't have the ambition, you know, yeah. the drive. And and it's and, like and you forget about it, and you just like accept mm-hmm. that, like, well, it's time to get serious with my life and and do something like. When really you're just doing nothing, you know? Right. And and what is getting serious with your life? What does that even mean? You know what I mean? Like, does that mean I have to work a job that I hate? Does that mean yeah, I have to find... It's, it's code for giving up. <laughs> 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 yeah. Yeah. No, it is. It is. It is that thing. It's like, oh, I take responsibility for my life. And it's like... Well, have you been taking responsibility for your life? Like, have you been getting by? Like, I don't know, you know, like... Did you work as hard as you could have at your dreams and your goals? You right. Know? Exactly. Exactly. And, and I, you know, like, man, I always I always feel like I'm not doing enough. Same. Oh, I always feel like that, that I'm not getting enough done. So I'm just wondering how people feel when they just come home and just feel like they're done. Like... <laughs> <laughs> Does that yeah. even feel? Do you co- you just come home and you're like, oh, the day's done. I get to go and chill. No, no I get home and I do and I do chill. But I sit there and I think, fuck, I have so much work like that I could be doing right mm-hmm. now. I shouldn't just be sitting here enjoying my time. I should be like editing videos. I should be working on content. I should be live on stream. I should be wor- learning a new song. Like, there's so much to do yeah. that I should I should not just be sitting and relaxing. Although I do think it's important to have downtime for yourself. You know? Oh, absolutely. Like sit down and watch the game, new Game of Thrones episode. You know, mm. whatever. Yeah. No, you can't just be all work. That's how that's how people fucking go crazy or. But burn you do out. need to do a lot of work. You do like it, it. It takes pretty much endless work to make these dreams and these goals come true. Yeah. And I'm learning that it's not like you know I'm preaching you know, like. Like, I've earned it, you know, and made it, but I'm working towards something that I see is working. Yeah. And, and it, it has taken endless work. And and you see, like, the light at the end of the tunnel. Like, you see that, I, I mean, like, where you can be. Out. Maybe not the light at the end of the tunnel yet, but I've made it to checkpoints, you know. <laughs> no, I mean, not, I mean, but I'm saying, like, because for, for me, you know, like, being successful in, 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 in music or art or whatever is being able to be self-sufficient on that art right so or however you can and so you know success is different for other people sometimes success is like you know million album sales or something you know but like i think i think that the idea of just being independent is like such a huge thing you know what i mean it, that that from that independence you can go anywhere you need to go from there <clears throat> When you're when you're dependent on a job and a boss and a, and a schedule and it's like fuck you know like it, it's 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 almost like a little prison you know because yes. there's there's those moments where you you you're touched by um, by drive or the muse and you're stuck at work washing dishes or something and and, and you put yourself there and you're yeah. constantly thinking about like. Like, oh, uh, what if I would have done the thing I wanted to do? You know, like yeah. the opportunity I that was in front of me that I turned down. You know, and yeah. and going back to talking about like, uh, you know, like just seeing the outcome of your of your work and stuff. You know, for me, it's been 
I know I'm doing the right thing and I'm achieving these goals. And, and I see it when it's like, one of the big things for me is like when people make an art of me or something, if people are making John art, you know, I'm like, you know, I'll just make a job, a art of fucking somebody who's doing nothing, you know, mm-hmm. like, but I, I, somebody just made a beautiful art of me. I want you to show it too. Some John tent. Just, somebody. Yeah. Some John tent. Dude. It's all about the John tent. Uh, should I, should I just email this to you? Oh, I thought you were going to hold it up, but it's like a no, it's, digital it's, thing. Digi- it's a digital art sure. that somebody just sent to me uh, after the, the Halloween Horror Trivia stream. And it, it, did, it made me tear up. It made Aww. me want to cry, man. It, made, it blows my mind, dude. Yeah, man. Email it over and I'll, I'll, I'll pull that shit up. Yeah, yeah I'll email it to you. It'll take me like three seconds. Three seconds too long, motherfucker. Three seconds is too long. <laughs> that's what i love man when i first started streaming i used to like feel like i had to like constantly be doing shit like oh i gotta but it's nice to like once you get comfortable with this you you can sort of take your time and like you know people are hanging out you know we're just chilling yeah there's no reason to be all just rushing through shit i uh yeah i think i think i sent it so if you got it i I, it actually changed for me man because i've streamed since 2016 and I used to be, you know, I used to sit and chill and stream, you know, have like three or four viewers and it didn't matter. I could do whatever I wanted, you know, and since I've been on Team Glow Stick and making this content and pushing myself, I do feel a little more stressed about like when I go live, like, like I have to have something cool to do and be funny and have a show. And, and it feels like more stress and pressure than like when I used to stream. Mm, yeah but wow. the content is better like it, it, right. at the end of the day right it, well you're holding yourself up too to another standard as well yes so, you know like you, you you feel it's important okay here we go this is amazing by the way this is it's dude it's so amazing like i said it, like i was like what dude like i can't believe really people would even take the time to do, do something so detailed and crazy look at like that this. that's so dumb and you still have the fucking aviator <laughs> oh, he, he sent it to me i was like is that supposed to be he's like well who the fuck else has long blonde hair and wears aviators you know like dude this is so rad i fucking love this so much it's a handmade art that so he just did the, the other day yeah that is fire that is fire. Yeah, it blew my mind, man. What's and there's this? A couple of, I have like a whole folder of art that people have done for me. Oh, I don't know what the armor is. I'm gonna have to ask Dude, him. Like, is that sigil. like specifically from a game or something? Like, it almost looks like a wolf or something. I don't know. You need a goat. Maybe you need a goat. I'm wondering if it's like some Dark Souls stuff because uh, uh, I I got my you know my start on twitch and and how i grew i was in the dark souls community mm-hmm. and uh you're familiar with dark souls right and, yeah and I did, and all i've games. never played it but I, i'm familiar with it yeah they're, they're hard games and i used to do like challenge runs uh with, like without leveling and i'd kill all the bosses without leveling on all the games and and i did that after a year and, and, and it was like a big big thing for me dude that's like what gave me a lot of confidence and my whole life, you know, I was like, I, I did this thing that not many people have done in the in the whole world, you know. I can fucking do anything, dude. Like, mm, yeah. Well, was that the first time that you were ever challenged in that way, or challenged yourself in that way? Absolutely, yeah. It wow. was, it, and 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 I realized I'm a masochistic person. Hmm. I'm somebody with tons of patience. I learned a lot about myself doing those challenges. <laughs> i have a lot of patience (laughs) yeah i have more patience than almost anybody on this whole planet probably because i would fight one boss for like 40 plus hours die and die and die and and, and like just like ah, like hate myself and no but never gave up i fucking (laughs) finished it dude like i never gave up i believed in myself i did i did (laughs) and it's it is like a heartwarming story but but no it, that's interesting, man. That a video game could bring you that because totally. I always imagine, you know, I, I never picture video games as something that could bring confidence. Only because you know, like gamers get a bad rap, you know, in in the incel community and stuff like that. They tend to be gamers and stuff, so it's like it's it, you get a picture of somebody who's a gamer, and it's like, what are you doing with your life? What is this doing for you? Like, what is it? But I never 
I never imagined that it would be, you know, give someone confidence and give yeah. someone, you know, like, hey, man, I can do this. I can do anything. It, it did give me confidence in real life, you know, like, and I still use that today. Like, like if I'm doing something hard, I'm like, John, you fucking beat all Dark Souls games without leveling all bosses. Like, remember, you can fucking do this, dude. Like, I do. I use it as a a life lesson, you know, and, uh. Uh, you know, uh, the only other thing that really gave me that kind of like life lesson was like, skateboarding. Mm, you know? Yeah, yeah. Well, there was a time in my life when I was getting good at skateboarding, and if you stalk my Instagram and go back there, there's some videos of when I was getting good at skateboarding. Which maybe we'll do that. Maybe we'll, <laughs> fucking do, maybe we'll do that right fucking now. Uh, and I, I can't do any of this stuff anymore, but, do, but do, I did. I pushed for it. That's what I was saying, like oh, about yeah. the sound and stuff too. That's that life lesson I learned. Where it's like if you hyper focus on things and you continually do them and try to do it and learn it, you you will do it. You know, like yeah. people give up on shit because they oh I suck at it. I can't do it. You know. Yeah. No. It, it's it's like oh good. I guess I won't Here's be doing that. <laughs> uh oh, bloody legs. Oh look at yeah. you. Is this you young? Yeah. Yeah. Er? Yeah. Younger, yeah. yeah so what, twenty fifteen? Uh, I was like twenty twenty one. Wow. 20, oh. So how old are you? Like twenty six? I will be twenty eight in like ten days. Uh, wow. Eight days. Uh, Eleven days. <laughs> the numbers keep changing. I love that. Okay. They go about, go up and watch like one of the video ones or something. Where's the video? See, I started with like food food content, you know, <laughs> chef stuff. Then I became then I became a skateboarder, you know. Oh, you uh, mean. the uh, this song, you know, this is like when I first getting kickflips down and stuff. Didn't really have it though. The one with the the black screen is a is a kickflip, but it's it's you know. This is my early days of like editing and doing stupid shit, so it's kind of a shitty video, but it's all about that last, this last video here where, where I do a kickflip. Right here, check it out. First kickflip I ever landed, and it's on fucking video. Boom! And you're like, yes! And oh, dude, I was so stoked. Well, you know, man, it's it's interesting that how people, you know, like, how are you saying how people give up so easily if it's something's really, really hard? And, yeah. um,. Skateboarding, musician, like or, or learning an instrument, these things, these are all great ways to test yourself. Mm -hmm. Or it, playing very hard video games. Playing hard video games, like anything that challenges your mind, your body, yeah. physically. I mean, I just feel like that's what we're we're here for. I feel like but that's we, what I live for, man. I like, I'm like, I, I like testing my brain and seeing if I can do do these things, and I'll like learn something you know instead of just mindlessly existing yeah because i feel like the people who do end up getting like thank you reina for the happy early birthday the Sorry. the alzheimer's and the and the you know and the dementia shit I, I really do feel like it doesn't help when you like retire and you're just watching the prices right all day right and, right yeah, you're just <laughs> letting your bra your brain rot you know Instead of like exercising it, it's a muscle of your brain and you can keep it fresh, you know. And like I know people who, who are eighty years old and they're, they're still smart and they still do stuff and they still volunteer, you know, like Absolutely. Absolutely. You have all their wits with them and they're reading all the time and Yeah. Still can Ollie and kick flip at least. Oh nice, nice. I did. There was there was video of like some guy who was like seventy and he was and he was ripping up skateboard and doing Oh, I saw crazy that. Crazy tricks and shit where he throws the board on the ground and it flips and he lands on it. Yeah, shit. doing old school tricks and shit. Yeah. It, that that shit just proves me and I and that's another thing I can't stand when people are like Oh, I'm too old for that. Oh, this and that. It's like, man, I know pe I have friends of all ages who still do that shit. And like, you know, it's just an excuse to say you're too old. It just you, you've let your mind get out of shape. You've let your body get out of shape and, and you're not working it, you know? Yeah. Now, I'm not, you know, I not want to talk about I can let bodies get out of shape because I know how that is, but. <laughs> That's all I'm in right now, man. I'm just so <laughs> fat right now. I'm so fucking fat. But my mind is sharp. My mind is sharp. My mind is doing <laughs> well. My my mind is dulling as well. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting fatter, and my mind's dulling. Uh, everything's going great for me. Uh, no, it, but but it's like um, <clears throat> I, I do um, I do like the way I um, 
I do like the way that my mind is working now because I feel like I have a better understanding of certain things in life, you know. It's nice to have a little bit of perspective because when you're a young man, you you, you know, you, you shoot from the hip. You don't give a fuck. I'm never going to die. It's fucking rock and roll forever, bitch. Let's go. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Um, but yeah, it would be dope to be like some old dude still fucking doing kick flips and shit, you know, like, let's, uh, let's see, who is this guy? Is he some older dude? I'm 52. Look at me. <laughs> He's an old guy. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Yeah, but then they fucking like land wrong and break their tibia. <laughs> Oh, and then you're just done, yeah. <laughs> you're done. <laughs> oh, my God. That is, that is the truth of it, though, with skateboarding. That's why I quit skateboarding, because it's like, okay, you get older, and you hurt yourself, and you don't heal, you know, like. Yeah, yeah. Because, you know, your body just doesn't heal. Like, Yeah, it's fucked up, dude. So I was like, I'll be a musician, because that's, like, way healthier and safer, and I won't hurt myself. But then, you, you know. You become way unhealthier because you're partying like a rock star and stuff. Like, oh, I'm just drinking every day and partying, and yeah, I'm out of shape and, and living that good life. At least if I was skating, I'd be in shape and like you know. It's true. It's true. The dude, the most fit I ever was was when I was skating. Yeah, the most fit I ever was is when I was biking all the time. Yeah. Um, but I'm not a biker. I mean, I'm not like a bike trick guy. I'm like just, fucking like, Matt Hoffman shit, dude. <laughs> no, fuck no. Um, I'm only 34. Society, society snaked me out of having fun pretty young. Just kidding. Oh, well, that's good. If I'm still alive at 60 and I can walk, I bet I can do a kickflip still. It's like twiddling your thumbs after doing it for so long. I don't know if that's true, but, you know. <laughs> like considering I can jump a foot in the air. Well, now you're just bragging, Nick. You just come right, here to and brag. without proof. And without proof. That's <laughs> another one of my things. Like, it's easy for people to say shit and chat on the internet, but unless I'm seeing videos and, and, and or pictures of it, then how can I know that? I just assume that everyone is lying to me on the internet until they prove it. <laughs> Nick, At least with my shit, I'm like, I've got videos and pictures of it. You know that you. Can, I've always said that it's like it's important to capture shit. Yeah. Because then you can show people You got to prove it. This day and age, it's like if you can't prove what you've done with videos and shit, then it might as well have not happened. (laughs) Nick, it's totally cool, man. I am not shitting on you. I I was just making a shitty joke. No, neither am I. (laughs) No one's one's like, where's the proof, bitch? You ain't got shit. You got the proof. (laughs) (laughs) This this podcast stops right here until we get proof (laughs) that Nick Tronic was out there doing (laughs) kickflips. I love you, Nick. It's all good, man. Man, I, I can't even do one kickflip, so there you go. How, how about that? In, in total, I probably did like four kickflips in my my whole entire skateboarding career. Once I like learned how to land the kickflip, that's when I quit skateboarding. I was like, all right, I did it. I did it. I, I did a kickflip. That's the coolest thing that you can do as a kid. Like The coolest kid thing is to do a kickflip. I did it. I got it on video. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> I'm done with this. I, I can move on with my life. I'm the boy who cried kickflip. Ha ha. I'm dead. Aww. <laughs> I'm the boy who cried kickflip. <laughs> do uh, a kickflip. Do, do a kickflip, bitch. <laughs> um, I'm just really trying to see these old guys. Oh, these are like old there's, people so there's skating. There's one specific old guy. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. And, and this is not delivering. Hold on. Let me see. Uh, uh, just the old guy. Sexy, she looks at that dress. trick. I don't know. Old guy skates pro. I don't know. Is this him? Hilarious. It's him, dude. Ben, este tipo se llama. All right, se llama. Benajo. Come on, bro. <laughs> Oh no, this is old. They dressed up like old men. Oh yeah. Hey, go back. This isn't it. They're pretending. Old man prank. Old man skate tricks. Oh, it's that that one with the old, old man uh yeah, yeah, old man tricks. That's the dude. That's him. Gnarly Neil. Gnarly Neil. Let's go, Gnarly Neil. He looks homeless. That's awesome. He does look homeless. <laughs> I mean skateboarders generally kinda look homeless. They right? do. 
There you go. Yep. Liz Van, oh, dude. Fucking, you go ahead and tell me I'm too old to do shit. Down. Oh, okay. Listen, if Gnarly Neil can do it, you can do it too, friend. Now, I remember that, I, but I remember that, that idea of, of achieving something that I had never achieved before and, and giving me a, a bit of confidence. I remember the first time I lost, like, literally hundreds of pounds. <laughs> Almost. That's the one. Come on, baby. You could do it. He's, he's trying to, like, uh-oh. I just he's gonna gave gonna do it. He's going to do it. We're watching gnarly Neil. <clears throat> we we need to what we need this. We Every, need this. I need him to land this. <laughs> I need you to land this gnarly Neil. Oh, <laughs> almost. I mean, the fact that you can even get up there. Yeah. Damn it, gnarly Neil. Oh, yeah. Come on, baby. Oh, gnarly Neil. Oh, oh, this is this is. Neil. He's got a whole ass documentary about him, or oh, what? This motherfucker, he's just out here. Yeah, we know gnarly. Just show the skate stuff. Yeah, do the bounce trick, dude. Do the tricks. <laughs> we 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 don't want to hear you talking. <laughs> Always think about how fit I would be if I still skated. Oof. Yeah. Look exactly. at this guy. Look at this guy. This guy looks like he floated in off of a fucking. There it is. <laughs> that was a rough landing, but he it landed. It was a rough landing, but fucking, you're 70 it. years old or whatever. <laughs> 60 years old. Well, now I want to hear what the, this asshole is saying. Whatever way my, my self can figure out how to do that. And so, what else can I say about I can't being it. older? It here. It's just, it's getting, it's so fun. And I, it, and I can, I apply what I learn about the mind and the creative uh, process. Is it coming through now? No, you have it paused right now. Oh, I did, but oh, fucking shit. No, but I was just seeing if you could hear him. Skateboarding tricks. And I, okay. that other, I wanted Let's to just skate get to, to the good shit. Continuing right? to be able to skateboard. Then fuck you, Neil. Just show us the tricks, you son of a bitch. <laughs> Look at him go. Gnarly Neil looks a lot older than 60. <laughs> he does, doesn't he? You know, you know, I'm sure there's you know, some some drinking and partying involved, you know. So, hold on. This stuff will age you. That will definitely age you. Gnarly I, Neil. I, I've had friends who were 50 that looked older than Gnarly Neil. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That is true there. Oh, he has his own YouTube page and shit. Look at this dude. He has like 50,000 subscribers. Good for Neil. He's like, I grew up in California. Hmm. Still out there. When is this video from? Is this recent? Five years ago. Oh, here he goes. Oh. 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 <laughs> Hits it. So steezy, dude. There it is. Look at those old school. That's his, that's his uh, good signature trick, dude. That, that is dope. That seems like those are like those old school tricks, you know? Those, yeah. The ones that like fucking where they pick it up and spin it and then jump back on. <laughs> Oh, he's teaching how to do it. It's a tutorial for him. Oh, you son of a bitch. Really slamming hard, but with the new school shape, shouldn't need to. The bounce is created by this spring action. See that spring action? Yeah, I see the spring action. And that, of course, gives you raise your tail from the top. So you put a little wax right there. That'll help the board slip so it can keep moving in the direction you're going. Mm. Here it goes, right here. I can't hear what he's saying, but I basically First know try. what he's saying. Right, he said put some wax on the end so it'll keep the board going the direction that you're, you're going oh, in. Oh, yeah, so it slides yeah. a little bit. Yeah. With you. Well, how about just bouncing it? Has to hit at an angle like this. Back first. Hit at an then angle. Then it comes up. There it is. There you go. Oh. Damn. <laughs> go ahead, Neil. <laughs> What I want to explain about the difficulty of the bounce is... See, and this dude, he perfected that trick, you know? <laughs> this he did it over and over and over and over and over until he could nail it almost every time. Yeah, man. And, like, that's the thing. When you when you hit those moments in your life where, you're, where you finally hit the trick or you finally hit that lick or you finally beat the game or whatever it is, it's like yeah. those moments are so important. And I feel like so many people just don't have those moments in their lives. No. And, 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 like, they don't push themselves... Not, uh, or and no one pushes them to push themselves as well. Another problem for me is uh, like once I hit those moments, a, a lot of times I'll stop doing that thing. 
you know, and it's like, <laughs> like, all right, I did it. I don't ever have to do that again, you know, like. <clears throat> Which is interesting. That That is an interesting thing where it's like I, I, I challenge myself. I hit that challenge and I'm good. I can just move forward. On to the next challenge. Try something else. Which I, but, but, but you see, like, I feel like you're like my wife. Okay. My wife, she is like, my wife, my wife is a like habitual, uh, uh, hobbyist. Well, well, at least she used to be. And I'd be like, oh, you're going to, are you going to make soap for three months and then do something else? Oh, you're going to learn to knit for three months and do something (laughs) else. And she'll do it. And then she would stop. But then, you know, after a few years, you know, she has all these different weird little skills. And she she got f- thrown under the bus at her corporate job. And she was like, you know what? Fuck this. I know how to run a business. I know what's up. And all those fucking weird little things that she was learning for three months at a time and getting bored or whatever, moving on. She she brought that shit back up and created a whole art program for after school kids because art programs are getting uh, can or are getting uh, um, uh, uh, removed from the curriculum because of money problems, right? Um, so we would go and be basically, essentially, be their art class. And the thing was is that she. Even though she didn't become like a professional soap maker or whatever, and she just had fun with it, she was able to take those skills and create an entire business off of it. So I feel like what you're doing is that you're learning something until you're done with it, but you're learning a method. You're learning something, right? You're learning, you're taking something from that that you're going to apply to something else. And so, like, it's not like you just get to a point and you quit. It's like you learn what you need to learn and you move on. And then one day... Like I said, learning some of these things have given me confidence to move on to do a lot. Well, I know that because I did that, I'll be able to accomplish the next thing. Exactly. And, and like, like playing guitar, too. It's like the smallest, most incremental improvements like give you so much energy and excitement to keep learning. It's like, oh, my God, I hit that. And and then that makes you want. Well, I can, if I can do that, I can do this. And then if yep. I could do that, I can sweep. And if I could do that, I can tap. And if I could do tapping, I can. You know, I can do any Van Halen. Let's go. You know? I definitely can't. I definitely can't sweep. <laughs> me neither. But, uh, but now, me as a guitarist, I always have been like, I don't. I've never wanted to learn shredding and solos. I've always been a rhythm player. Hence why I play the bass and stuff now too. I've mm. I've always liked like riffing. And holding down rhythm and stuff, and like my friends have been the lead guitarists, you know, like JMO and Jake and my buddy Cal from uh from the band Biomassive that I'm repping right now. Hey, let's go! Massive. Shout out to Biomassive, nice. another band I work with. Nice, that's a cool shirt, by the way. I like that. Yeah, the like... shirt's dope, dude. The shirt is Here, dope. Show, show everybody again. One, one more time, one more time. Biomassive. Look at that. Yeah. Yeah, fucking... It's fucking tight. Some some uh, Cavaltian stuff here, you know. <laughs> True cult. Yes, let's go. Let's get into it. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, the 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 learning new stuff. I think is one of the things that is always going to be important for growth as a as a human. You know, what I yep. mean, constantly learning something new, constantly challenging yourself. Because the moment you stop is the moment is basically you you your mind is like everything just starts to go it's right right it's it's like working out you know like doing push-ups and stuff you have to continually be working out to keep your muscles and be strong and stuff and and when you're not using your brain and exercising it it, uh your memory is not going to be as good your your wit and your you know everything do you exercise uh hell no dude i'm not my body I'm, th- I'm already thinking about tacos and chicken wings right now, <laughs> Me man. Me too, bro. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, I'm hungry too. There's a there's a bar that like has like a uh, game day special shit, you know, like on Mondays, and I'm like, oh, cheap ass tacos and chicken wings, like right after the stream. That's where I'm going. I'm good. Yo, I love that. That, that that's great. The the I. I are you do you, do you live in where where you live? Or are you in a very walkable part of town where you can walk to yeah. the grocery store? Oh, that's right awesome. downtown, right downtown by all the bars, the oh, lake, sorry. and the beaches. Like oh, my that. my window up here in the in the castle tower, uh, in the castle hall, overlooks the the bay. You know, wow. pretty much. Oh, that's so cool! Hell yeah! Yeah, 
Hell yeah, man. There's just some really beautiful places of Michigan. People people don't give the Midwest the its due because there's some really beautiful places here. Yeah. Uh, Michigan has some great, great, just awesome places. That, like the UP. I mean, North, yeah. northern Michigan just fucking kills it, though. Like, like, there's just nothing like it, man. It's just it's no, so beautiful. No, and I think there. when people think of Michigan, they think, like, the Detroits and mm-hmm. the Flints and, the, like, the nasty spots. And it's like... yeah. Like 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 the north is sucking is is so beautiful. There's so much beauty and like and so when people come here from big cities and stuff or like other countries, uh, I I try to be like a like a guide, like a tour guide, and I take them to all these places like that. Like you would never know about, and you you may only have one chance in your life to see. You know, like and I like to be that guy to show you it. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah, man. Hell yeah. You, you the, being being the host. There's nothing yeah, like it. Absolutely. Being a I would good do host. it for anybody, you know. When you guys come, I'm gonna fucking put you up in a nice room, I'm gonna make sure you have everything you need, and then I'm gonna take you all around and show you all the cool shit. Oh, I'm I'm here for it. I'm here for it. We're gonna we're gonna fucking party and we're gonna Yes. I'm gonna refrain from drinking so much that I fuck up the drum circle and <laughs> <laughs> This is like how do you fuck up a drum circle? Well, I could show you. <laughs> <laughs> it's like everybody's constantly starting over a new rhythm. It's just like, oh Jesus, that, it was awesome though. Um, well, I, I do. You, so, do you have any uh, original music out? Do you do any original music? I only have one single original song that's kind of just like a little test song, and it's cute. And it actually gives you like a a, a sweet like Michigan landscape that you can play if you want. It's only like two minutes. You, you could have done that one earlier though. It's the 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 winter warmth. Uh, is, is it I on your just YouTube? Started, it's on my YouTube. I had just started like producing my own music or recording. I just got lot. I use Logic Pro X, oh, so nice. I'm not super good like at all that stuff. But I've got a couple things on SoundCloud too. I did a, a aquatic ambiance from Donkey Kong Country. I made my own cover of it. I turned it into like this like rock ballad oh, that man. turned out pretty fucking sweet and is worth a listen. Hell yeah, on my SoundCloud. All right. And uh, otherwise, I'm just working on some other stuff, you know. You, I mean, you 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 want you want to do more original stuff? Absolutely, absolutely. I just uh, haven't sat down and really worked it. I have tons of like riff ideas and things. I just don't. I don't have it all pulled together right now. All right. So where where is this video? John mm. Tent on intro trailer. It's before that. Stay awake. You said it's only like two minutes? Yeah, it's called Winter Warmth. Winter Warmth. Winter Warmth. And it should look like a like a little snowy la- uh, landscape. Oh, here it is. Found it. And I did all the shots myself. I, I got real inspired one day, like during lockdown, and I did this. Oh, I made cute. like the song in like two days, and then I went out and shot the video and put it together. It's pretty cute. <laughs> Oh, I wish I would have found this. Yeah, you gotta show the video with it. Oh shit, my bad. <laughs> I thought we were all on the. <laughs> <laughs> Some Michigan stuff going on here. Yep. This is like right outside my house. They have oh. ice Yeah, I just kind of like farted that one out in like two days. You know? It's got a vibe. 
<laughs> yeah, that was nice. That was very nice. I, and, and, it, and it started with that. Boo, doo, 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 you know, just like, that's all I had for an idea. And then it all just sort of came together. And I was like, that's, you know, I, I was really like, I want to make lo fi tracks, you know? Yeah. When I make music, uh, whatever, I, whatever I do, I'm not trying to be bound by any genre. Mm. I, of course, I'm a metalhead and all that. But uh, I've, I've really opened up to like, I want to make like house tracks, you know, like because yeah. when I DJ, I do a lot of like house music and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, I would make anything, dude. I would make reggae songs. Like, I just want to make music. I feel you, man. I feel you. Back in the day, it would be like, you know, a, a young John's like, fuck that metal only. I'm never going to sell out, dude. And fucking some country artist asked me to play in their band and sell out. I, I totally would. I would do it in a heartbeat. Like, Wait. I would sell out so dude, fast. Country pays, son. Dude, I know. Country pays. You get that country paycheck. Where's that country paycheck at, motherfuckers? <laughs> <laughs> um using uh so, so you use logic and uh yeah do you use a lot of like um do you do you know how to use like plugins and do like mixing and stuff like that uh it's somewhat somewhat mm. yeah mixing mastering that's a whole nother fucking mixing skill. mastering's hard and, yeah. and that, that's something i don't have down yet but like from what that track was, you know, like yeah, that sounded good. I did all right. Like it sounds right. My huh? buddy, he writes incredible music, but he can't mix as well as I can. You mm. know, like the shit he writes is way crazier than anything I could come up with. But like it also, it's like man, your drums are really quiet. You only ever have like one guitar tone. You know, like yeah, like if you had somebody sweet mastering your stuff, it, it, this would all sound so good. Right. Yeah, man, that 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 thing that takes a long time. And what sucks about mixing and mastering? Well, not sucks, but what what one of the biggest thing is is just really it's just training your ears and then knowing what what gear or what software you need to like to get to what you want. But it's yeah. like, but it's like, I mean, that's like it, the the, this, uh, the that's easier it, said than boundless done. limits. You right, know, like, exactly. Like, where do I start? How do I know what I need? Like. <laughs> How is someone else gonna know what I need? Like, right. Yeah. How no. Do I explain it. Like, you just have to start buying things and trying things. Yeah, know? man. It really is. Uh, uh, like, like uh, you know, trial by fire. Like how you done it yourself. He's like, I don't know how to be a sound guy, so I'm gonna go hang out and yeah. find out. And it's like, well, I don't know how to mix and master, so I'm gonna go learn or whatever. It's like, and the knowledge is out there, especially on oh, YouTube yeah. and the internet. Like, YouTube you just, If you if you really are interested, you'll sit there and spend hours watching videos, learning. That's attempting you. these things by yourself <laughs> like on that winter warm track i was like hmm like i need to figure out how to make the vinyl crackle you know like mm -hmm. like, like a lo-fi song so i looked up a video and this guy shows a tutorial of, like how to do all this weird shit and then like copy and paste it so you have vinyl crackle through your whole song yeah. you know like all right i just learned a new skill you know yeah, I, I've learned how to do that, too, using, like, a synth and using noise generator or whatever. Yeah, yeah there's, like, uh, hundreds of ways to do it. Right. And then, fucking, I forgot, like, how to do it. I forgot how to do it, too, but I know I, like, okay, I know but where the video is, and I look can it go up. back and learn right. it in three you can, minutes. You can reference it very quickly, yeah. Or I could open up my logic, and, and I have that file right. saved in there, and you then have it, the chain. it'll show what yeah. it is. Well, exactly. Oh my. Well, John, I appreciate you being on the show. I appreciate you chatting it up with me and I'm sure you have to pee as bad as I do. Uh, so why don't we start wrapping this baby up? Uh, is there any, uh, is there anything, uh, coming up that you'd like to promote or, or uh, you have, when's your next stream? Hmm. I'll probably stream tonight. It'll probably just be chill. Like, I've been doing a lot less gaming content and stuff, and I just did the horror trivia stream, and I've been doing all kinds of cool content. To and it, you know, it's really close to Halloween. Uh, they just dropped the new Resident Evil Eight um, DLC, so I'm gonna play that for funsies. I want to play mm. the Quarry. That's like uh, it's basically like a horror movie. I don't know if you've uh, messed around with any gaming stuff. Uh, well, I, I do a gaming stream with my son, but he likes Minecraft. Like I like right, right. I love That's Minecraft. Stuff I would never do, you know. <laughs> I love Minecraft dungeons, but right now we're playing South Park Fractured Butthole. Oh, nice. So nice. that's fun. Mighty, mighty. Thank you so much for that gifted sub to Cartagena. I appreciate you. Thank you so much. That you're too kind. 
too kind. I appreciate that. Um, <clears throat> all right. So, uh, what time you think about streaming then? Oh, probably around midnight. Oh, see, that's why I never catch your stream. Uh, yeah, I will. I'm um, stay awake squad, you know. The, yeah, the, the, my whole on. brand is stay awake squad. Um, <laughs> my whole brand is staying awake. It bitch. is, man. It is. Uh, mighty, mighty. Why, you know, yeah. I feel bad. I feel bad. I didn't. Uh, I didn't get you guys any of these. But uh, when I see you next, or if, if you guys want me to send you some, I can. The uh, stay awake stickers. Oh, you're goddamn right. I want some. How about I send you a woo sticker, and you can send me a stay awake. So. Yeah, I'll send you guys like four or five of them so you yeah. guys can have a couple. We'll, we'll do a trick, a, 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 t- a sticker trade. The sticky trade. The sticky trade. All trade right. stickies. <laughs> no, we trade stickies. That that, that, <laughs> that sounds funny. Um, <laughs> John, is there any uh, last words you'd like to leave with us um, before you part? You know, and I, I, I'm doing some. I'm doing some shows and stuff for Halloween. Uh, it's it's gonna be a good Halloween week. You guys, make sure you follow me. I'll be live streaming. Uh, doing shows if you want to see some sweet john tent and join the stay awake squad you guys know where to find me i am yes i'm john thank you mike ep for having me so much i had a good time on the we speak english good podcast and maybe one day uh maybe one day we could do it again maybe one day i'll bring you on to my podcast oh, and we didn't which even is talk- the stay awake squad cast we didn't even talk about the squad cast the oh, stay man. awake squad cast. B- before you, you go that. okay wait before you go then what what what's your what's your squad what's your podcast about my it, so it, it's like uh, basically a, a music and arts podcast. I've brought different uh, artists on there. I only did one season, eleven episodes, but it, it, I had Glass Blower on there, Glass Moon Man, who you probably met at Willie Town. Mm. Uh, this band, punk band, Stay Awake. Their name was Stay Awake from Thailand. I brought them on. They were awesome dudes. Um, a guy who makes a friend of mine who makes chip tunes off of Game Boy colors, like and makes like songs using Game Boys and shit. Dope. Oh, hey, dude, he he does super dope stuff. This is his. I got his uh mixtape right here. <laughs> his mixtape. Seas off, seas off. You look up seas off. You can see him oh. do it. You can also find all these podcasts on my YouTube, the Stay Awake Squadcast. It's all on YouTube. Um, and just for you guys, you can. And here's his YouTube, guys, so you guys can. Thank you, YouTube. thank you for dropping in. And if you uh, guys are listening on the audio side, make sure you are in the show notes and you are clicking around and supporting your boy John. And make sure that you're staying up to date with what he's doing. Ooh, I like that booty emote, moving Dutchman. That's a big old booty. That's a big old donkey, baby. All right. <laughs> yes, I'm John. I appreciate you coming on the show, my friend. I appreciate you, man. Hey, you have a wonderful rest of your day. Everybody, put your hands together for ah, uh, yes. I'm John! Let's go! Alright, brother. I'll talk to you later. Thanks, buddy. Alright, peace. Peace.